welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of Jesus Christ, May 8th. <laughs> Happy May 8th. Happy May, Happy May 8th, everyone. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting with me today with a very special guest because we have a very special topic today. Emma Watkins Jr., how are you? A minor! Oh, <laughs> a minor! I lost it. When he hit that, I was like, this guy's... Yeah. Hey, Kendrick Lamar was already my favorite rap artist mm-hmm. probably ever. Um, mm-hmm. I grew up on old school rap for my father. He listened to Tupac, Biggie, all you know, the very, the very old when they used to shoot each other in the head. And Kendrick, I don't know, he it it, it wasn't quite the same, but like it was almost like the evolution of, of what I would think that like what I would actually want back then. Because when as when I was like, oh, well, I was probably 14, 15 what? listening to this yeah. and I was like, Jesus, I love these guys. But like. This made them kill each other. So I, I want like a better version of this. And, and we kind of have that now. But uh, th- and she and Kendrick, I think, proved that he's, I mean, easily one of the best, if not the best out there right now, at least alive. I mean, absolutely. Kendrick absolutely destroyed Drake. And I think it's it's two things. Number one, the beef started and stayed personal until the very end. Yeah, it, did. it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't coast to coast. It wasn't territory to territory. Mm-hmm. It was. No, it was I don't like you. Yeah. and you don't like me. Yeah, and that's what it stayed. And it wasn't until "Not Like Us" came out. "Not Like Us" is a very West Coast track, very bouncy, very specific to the L.A. Bay Area. That's when you get the coast on your side when everything's already done, and now it's just a celebration. Mm-hmm. It, there's no more things to go on. It's just a celebration of the end. Um. And also, you know, Drake ain't shooting nobody. <laughs> no, not, Drake not. is a Drake is a baby back bitch. He ain't yeah, doing he, he's not. He's not. I remember what was it? it was some award show that they said there he was involved in a shootout. I was like, I don't believe that for a fucking second. I think that was in like nah. 2015 or some shit like that. And I was, like, I don't believe that for. Oh, especially said, not not pre beard Drake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I, I, some it was someone like that. And Jesus Christ, yeah, but was, apparently someone shot at his house though. Did you, did you see that? That's uh, the weekend. Because he had bars in mm. one of these his songs about how, hey, weekend, you're, you you say your security guard's doing shit. He ain't doing shit. He got shot earlier, blah, blah, blah. Got so it. apparently they spun the block on his house late in the night. And that's why there's tape and shit on his thing. Um, it. But it was funny. A lot of people on the internet were like, oh, one of the kids got out. <laughs> <laughs> oh terrible. God, terrible. I, but I, I, it's so funny. It's so funny. But yeah, yeah I. I, and I also like that we kind of all experienced it too. Like it wasn't just the usual suspect. It's like the whole it went it bled into like news. Like people were covering yeah. it like as a news story, and I was like, oh, this is cool. It's, it is very fun. I'm glad. I'm glad we're kind of having fun versus like teachers were on TikTok talking about. Oh man, the the tempo in the school has changed. Yes. this went from a Drake school to a Kendrick school Kendrick, like over that, the yeah. weekend. I, I loved that there was a a little snippet of a professor's TikTok or something like that. And he was like, I, breaking I saw down. him. You saw that? Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. I was like, I, lo- mm-hmm. I love this guy. Oh my God. He was like fully breaking down. I was like, how could you? And it was so good. Oh my God. I, actually, I, I was mesmerized by that gentleman. He was so good. It's so saw random him, too. Exactly. And I saw that guy in a FD signifier video not too long ago. Uh, so I, 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 because he, he has the FD stamp, I, I trust this dude. Uh, yeah. Professor Sky's yeah, record yeah, yeah. review. Yeah, I get um, that. I've been watching all his videos on the disc. I'm I'm catching up because he's made one for every single track. So yeah, I need, uh, I need to he, watch he has it. pretty good analysis. It's, it's really good. Mm-hmm. It was it was very good. It was, I was immediately intrigued. I was just scrolling on Twitter. I, it wasn't even TikTok, mm-hmm. and I, it came across. I was like, "What's this dude talking?" About? And I was like, "Oh my god, he's really like dope. you're breaking this down in a very fun way." It proves like one thing that very I'm very much about is I'll listen to literally anyone talk about anything if they're like passionate enough about it. And that's a good example of just someone like very articulating, talking about something and me just being mesmerized for, I think it was like five minutes, 10 minutes, Mm -hmm. something like that. I don't know where it's so good. Yeah. Very good. It's, it's, it's cool to have a big cultural moment like that. And look, I know there's way more important things going on in the world. One of which we're going to talk about later, but like, this is a massive cultural moment. I think, you know, it deserves to be recognized as such it does. because everyone's talking about it for a reason. Mm-hmm. It's not just frivolous. So I have friends cool hitting me up being like, Hey, I don't listen to rap. What should I be listening to just because of this? Like, can, can you like <laughs> send me some stuff? And I'm like, yeah, man, I'll take you. I'll take well, you. And I, you take some time. Send Kendrick, some stuff. Number one. Yeah, Ken, well, I, was like, I was like, well, Kendrick's my favorite. So here's, here's like, mm-hmm. you know, must listens. And then yeah. of course we go. Uh, oh, 
some J.I.D., some I love, Marlon Craft. I love J. Cole as well. Um, J. Cole's and, good. And I love the memes of J. Cole. <laughs> Like, like, t- like, it's Kendrick Lamar fighting J. Cole. It's the Spider Man meme eating a hot dog and walking away, dancing and stuff. So funny. Exactly. So funny. Oh my God. That was, that might have been Unbothered. the best part of this entire, entire beef. And I love that J. J. Cole, hindsight, probably the smartest man out of all three, all three of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Smart. just, Absolutely. He was like, nah, 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 nah. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> not, not I'm glad there's no this. dirt on J. Cole in the world now. Oh, yeah. God, I, I, I don't think I could take it. <laughs> <laughs> Emmett, I think I'd understand it. It's been a while. <laughs> hey, how are you? I I, I want to check in with you before we get into the actual show. How you been? How's how's everything with you? Of course, this is Emmett Watkins Jr. from Video Game Utopia. Welcome to the thing. We have um. What's the, uh, I'll what's also say spoonful, spoonful. podcast. Is I was about to say one? soup. Full. Um, I mean, soup full. <laughs> I'm horrible at this. Uh, spoonful. Yeah, I'll say spoonful has. Uh, there's no official break or anything, mm. but uh, I know Mario's been busy with yeah. school and whatnot. Yes. I've been busy with school and whatnot. And so where it used to be, hey, I'm not busy with school. I'll hit you up and get an episode going. Now we're both busy. And yeah. so it's like, eh, we get to it when we can. We'll see when we can make another one. But life's happening hardcore right now. And the beginning of every year for me is just, hey, welcome to the start of the year. You're now trying to save up from Christmas. Uh, here's your anniversary. Here's Valentine's. Yeah, yeah. Here's, our, here's your girlfriend's birthday. Mm-hmm. And now we're going on a trip two months after all that. So yeah, yeah, I was similar yeah. situation with my wife. Of course, we were talking a little bit before the show. Two Atlanta trips back to back. Had a blast, of course. Beetlejuice, the six, had a blast. But yeah, it is recovery time for sure from very fun trips. But I'm gl- I'm glad. Always glad to hear from you. Always glad that you're well and you could join in on again such short notice little peek behind the show first off uh, i want to thank everyone for continually making every month increasingly better for these years game pocket i want to thank everyone for joining mm-hmm. uh every month everyone if you think it's a little bit better thank you everyone for checking in the last week's episode if you're new here remember every single friday this is a special occasion of course so we'll be going live thursday today uh and then but normally it is a friday but of course the things with xbox and I wanted to get something quickly together, and Emmett is on a less than 24 hours notice for this podcast, and I very much appreciate that he was able to make the time today to join me, because I, I, I know you'll join whenever I ask, so I use it, I use my power <laughs> wisely. I don't want to, I don't want to overuse you, you know, because you're already, like you said, you're already so busy. Yeah, this week especially, considering the trip that's coming up, but uh, this, the topic we're talking about, very passionate about it, so I definitely wanted to have an opportunity to say my piece. On that note. Not so rapid fire. Here's a quick one. Remedy Ooh. Entertainment cancels a multiplayer game called Kestrel. I don't. I didn't really have much to do. We didn't know much about it. What we knew was this kind of obscure code name. I just wanted to throw this in there. I don't have much to add to this other than I trust Remedy and whatever they're doing. I trust that they're going to utilize the uh, utmost respect with their other properties. I uh, one some of their actual review of this was like, hey, well, this makes us focus on other projects. And I think that's going to be a theming in the show. Um, people realizing that a lot of companies are making too many games. And they're going to start sitting them out and really justifying every game release. Which I think is going to be good for the industry. But that makes a very painful now versus a good future. I, I actually want to bring up um, it's the timing of all this is so strange. And maybe I'll save it for later in the show. But the layoffs are crazy. Uh, and I'll, I'll shave it for when we get to it, but evergreen statement. <laughs> and, yeah. And it's insane that we're seeing all of this kind of happen at once. Uh, but do you have anything to say about this? Um, For the remedy news, not specifically, I think it does make sense for studios to, you know, focus on their biggest bets and their surest bets right now. I understand that it's rough out there, but it does get me a little bit concerned because if you put all your eggs in one basket, what happens if that basket falls and all the eggs break? Mm. So I think it's good to divest just a little bit at least. You know, uh, I don't particularly have too much faith in a Remedy multiplayer game. Um, not because I think they wouldn't do a good job, but because that's not their expertise. They yeah. do single player stuff. Even when they got close to multiplayer with Crossfire X, they still only touch the single player. So there's potential there, but I just don't see it. And I don't see the market valuing 
remedy spin on anything multiplayer. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that would be my concern. But hey, looking forward to the Max Payne remakes. Looking forward to whatever's yeah. looking forward to Control Two. Yes, like of all those, I'm very excited about. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure they have a bright future. But you know, just gotta tweak the knobs a little bit. Yeah. Right now, we don't really have an example of anyone single player focus going multiplayer and, and it working. So I think it's wise that they kind of sit down and being like, mm. oh, let's not do that. Or I, I should, I guess I should say games as a yeah. service specifically. I, I apologize. Yes, I did say multiplayer. Go. I use that interchangeably. I really shouldn't. But um, mm-hmm. games as a service specifically, of course, we have recently saw Rocksteady completely fall apart um, to the point where I'm worried that something's going to happen to them. Uh, they lost their founders uh, and now they're, they released a dud. Uh, this is not a Gotham Knight situation mm-hmm. where you're going to be at least be able to recoup costs on the name Gotham. I don't think anyone really cares about Suicide Squad, so I don't think it's uh, selling well. Uh, yeah, I think you can see that in the charts and things, and that makes me worried incredibly, especially Warner. F- frankly, it doesn't seem like they care that much about video games, so yeah. I, I, I would be very scared that they just completely act something. And them just being um, completely fully ignorant on their own success recently with Hogwarts Legacy and them repeating that, oh, we're going to keep focusing on games as a service title. It makes zero sense. The, no, no sense whatsoever from from that specific uh, conglomerate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little concerned about them too. Fifth, after like, what, a month after release, the game is already 50% off. That's, yeah, that's for, bad. that might be a Ubisoft move, but even Ubisoft only does that when it's Skull and Bones, which mm. is now 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So like, you know, it, it's, it's hard out there. It's scary out there executives it, it really lays at their feet and we'll talk a little bit more about we this will soon. we definitely will let's move on in the midst of the week-long break in between podcasts an entire controversy happened and was settled seemingly between hell divers and its player base and more specifically playstation and the hell divers player base although seemingly not a big deal on the surface this entire situation was actually set around having to link a PlayStation account to Helldivers 2 in order to play the game. Now, this had multiple ramifications that the community gathered together to try and stop. Uh, for instance, this cut off multiple regions in the world that, uh, from actually playing the game. Um, and they, and a lot of people use the justification that this is just an excuse for PlayStation uh, to get you one step closer into Iggy system by capturing your sales data, your, I mean, really anything. Your, uh, you have to make a wallet to buy things, so maybe they have access to your credit card to make it easier to buy things on PlayStation Store, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in response to this PlayStation, I want to say around five days later after um, kind of announcing and pushing through the stage, Helldivers, uh, they write on Twitter, quote, Helldivers fans, we've heard your feedback on Helldivers 2 account linking update. The May 6 update, which would have required Steam and PlayStation Network account linking for new players and for current players beginning May 30th, will not be moving forward. We're certainly learning what is best for PC players and your feedback has been invaluable. Thanks again for your continued support of Helldivers 2. It will keep you updated on future plans, end quote. Now, going into the borderline funny of the situation, the CEO (laughs) of Arrowhead wrote this, quote, Firstly, I am impressed by the willpower of the Helldivers 2 community and your ability to collaborate. Secondly, I want to thank our partners and friends at PlayStation for quickly and effectively making the decision to leave PSN linking optional. We together want to set a new standard for what a live service game is and how developers and community can support each other to create the best game experiences. And quote, I got to say, I'm actually in the Helldivers 2 Discord when I was really into it. Oh. I was uh, I was pinging that to get people to play and things of that nature. Uh, and it, it did really explode. I was getting updates, <laughs> people freaking out about the account linking. They had like mass updates about how it worked. Uh, and I got to say, I don't know if this has been clear through reporting. I'll be curious if uh, you saw this, Emmett, but uh, they, they were clear that this was a PlayStation and they had yeah. nothing to do with it, even through their official Discord channels, even through, I want to say, a couple of tweets I saw from a few of their community members or uh, managers. They were very clear that this was not the decision, and they said, talk to PlayStation, and it looks like the community did just that. What did you think about all this? I think this is fascinating. I think I'm impressed that PlayStation folded so quickly. Yeah. Um. I think, you know, I feel like PlayStation's kind of stumbled their way into PC gaming. I think, you know, they know to port it. They know to support all the features that are on Steam. They know the baseline stuff, but they're trying to figure out ways of how do we do more? Yes, we're selling a lot, but like, how can we get those numbers to show up on our sheets for the PlayStation numbers? 
And this is a great way to do it. And when they announced all the new features that were coming with Ghost of Tsushima, it seemed very exciting. And it was like, oh, shit, we're going to get we're going to have trophies on PC. Hell yeah. yeah. I was kind of excited about that myself. Mm -hmm. um, but now we see what's happening. And, you know, it's, it's one thing to introduce a new game with this requirement with these new features yes it's another thing to take something away exactly, from someone exactly this yeah. was their Achilles heel and i and i think they are trying to uh kind of piggyback on the success of hell ever sue let's remind remind us if error had not owned by playstation i think we can mm -hmm. argue, many people out there would argue they're first party i do not i they're still third party with second party tendencies um also they don't own hell divers 2 uh, specifically arrowhead doesn't but as a reminder um I think it was clear PlayStation didn't care about Helldivers 2. Um, they had mm -hmm. almost no coverage on this game. And it completely Absolutely. exploded. And popularity, specifically in the PC section, not the PlayStation mm -hmm. section. If, if, uh, if we're just talking PlayStation, they sold, I want to say, somewhere... They, I don't they, know the exact they number. They have like 100 something thousand players playing on PlayStation at a given time, I think. And then that could translate to millions of sales or something like that. I'll, I'll say it like this, because the stat I heard was this. Helldivers 2 is the seventh best-selling PlayStation-exclusive game of all time. But if you take out the PC sales, yeah. it's not even top 20. Yes, that's much a, that's probably a better succinct way of putting it. And since, since mm -hmm. we don't have, like, hardcore numbers, that is something exactly. we have to just kind of speculate on. But, yeah, that's true. PC is what fueled the game. So it's clear the that platform. they tried to kind of jumpstart their kind of pc initiative up there they probably have some sort of by this year we have x amount of playstation store users on pc and they of course wanted to use the success of hell divers in hindsight to utilize that mm -hmm. now i think i agree with you wholeheartedly if this was part of the user launch experience don't think we would have heard a single word about it i do not think so because many games were brought up as well these are examples of games that do this exact thing and they forgot one key thing almost every single game on those examples were when it launched not after not mm -hmm. not seemingly locking people out of regions which i gotta be honest i don't think anyone actually would have been like that or if they were it was probably a very small number that playstation didn't care about they would know how many people would get locked out it was probably such a small number if it was mm -hmm. any that they didn't care uh so i don't think they would I purposely lock out people who have bought the game from buying it or uh, from continuing to playing it. Yeah. I agree with you that they probably wouldn't care, but I think they misunderestimated, misunderestimated. That was a lot of miles on it. that word. <laughs> um, I think they didn't really consider, Hey, even if it's like 15% of the player base no longer has access to this game, 15% is still a lot of money that none of those people are ever going to play that game. If you mm. restrict it in that country. And then also that, seed of bad will spreads yeah it's no longer oh i love this game and it keeps going positive and more people play it it is now well this sucks and this sucks and this sucks and now mm -hmm. people are like maybe i won't pick it up and you slow down the momentum that hell divers have been able to keep yeah. going all this time and what's shocking is you say that momentum they have been able to keep a player base which is very mm. interesting for a game like this specifically right it's all you know it's, it's widely known that pvp is what kind of fuels a game there is no option and there will never be an option for this specific game. So that's it's so interesting to see that people are still playing this many people are still playing the game and it it is just you get you drop down on a on a little map and you you kill a bunch of bugs and or and or robots. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very intriguing that this is the game. Yeah, it's I, I agree. It's something something about this game that really struck a chord with many people and it's still going, which is which is, I'm so happy for Arrowhead, even though, you know, there's mm -hmm. situations that, you know, out of their control specifically, but I'm I'm so happy that they were able, such a random story too, this random PS Vita was translated <laughs> into a console game, uh, and it exploded once they just made it third person, which <laughs> so is almost yeah. di identical in every other way, except it's third person now. Yeah, goes to show you, audiences are thirsting for new IPs, huh? They are, yeah, they are, yeah, yeah, this is, this Maybe might not as the well most AAA there. game ever. No, and that's what's intriguing too. There is a sort of not jank because because when you say that it is semi negative, but th this is not the most polished thing in terms of like like I can't climb this rock or or, or like well yeah. or easily, you know. And it looks weird when you when you kind of jump off things and you kind of ragdoll, you know. But there's a lot of little things that make it 
that special experience that people seem to just fall in love yeah. with, which I'm again happy to see. I want PlayStation to um, continue to grab these studios and really propel them, even though uh, <laughs> seemingly they didn't think it would happen with this game. It still <laughs> helped them. Uh, I'm sure they they were pivotal in making sure this game even became a reality because uh, uh, clearly Xbox won't do it. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Ugh. Next up, Mark Hamill. This is a quick one. Is going to be voicing the Joker in the Multiverses uh, game. It's due out very soon. I want to say in the next next month or something like that. I should have grabbed that date. I apologize. But that it recently left early access. They brought the game down actually for a little while. And now it's going to come back with. Um, they got voices for everyone and a bunch of little things that the game was missing. Very excited for people who are excited for the game. I'm glad. Uh, I'm. I, I don't know. I like smash brothers type games being successful i know people cringe at like crossovers especially when batman can fight Arya stark it's a little strange but i don't know <laughs> I, I like seeing these little funny wild things because what how what else would happen like this specific situation yeah. it's so unique to games that i'm very happy uh to see see batman fight scooby-doo or something <laughs> <laughs> i feel that i feel that i'll say two things um i'm also I'm slightly looking forward to multiverses. I don't think I'm going to play it. I will. I don't think I'm sure. going to be really hard hardcore into it. No. But I'm interested to see where it goes. I'm interested to see how it lasts, what characters they add. I, like when they announce, hey, we got Gremlins and Black Adam coming to the game. Like goofy <laughs> shit like that. Yeah. I, I live for that type of vibe. So that's great. And they are um, very meme heavy. They have yeah, Shaggy Superfied or whatever. Like they like they know. Yeah, they know. And Shaggy. They know. The, they know it's weird. Exactly. Now, honestly, I'm telling you right now. Wait, Velma's already in the game. Never mind. Oh, is she? <laughs> I, I was going to say they're probably. Yeah, Velma's in the game because oh, her okay. whole thing is like she uses the mystery van and all this shit. And she's like <laughs> looking for clues the whole match. Awesome. It's, it's goofy, but like I love thing outside the box. So mm -hmm. that part aside, um, is Troy Baker not available? Is Nolan North mm. not available? Are there non Zionists that could be doing the voice? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to know. That's my only thing. <laughs> oh my that, god! The first time I saw that, I was like, "Really? I know we just had Terror Strong and Suicide Squad as well, so like, <laughs> I guess fuck everything." But right. I thought that was a little bit weird. But you know, it's the iconic voice, so whatever. I get it. I get it. Um, especially if you follow that specific. And I would love a whole show dedicated. I think it's so interesting. Uh, and I apologize. We're getting a little political here for a second. Check the timestamps if you don't want to hear about this or don't care to hear about this. But it's so, it is so strange um, to me. One, in a, in a such politically left-leaning community that we are in with the games industry, right? They are, I mean, it is pretty um, uh, left-leaning in multiple ways. And anyone who shows pretty much any signs of hardcore right-isms, I would say, is quickly... Uh, kicked out. I'll, I'll bring up um, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the founder of the studio behind the Shark game. I'm blanking on the name. Man Eater. Oh, uh, he, Man Eater. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. He was immediately kicked out. And it's funny Tripwire. that Tripwire. Thank you. Um, and it's funny that this time around, not a not a nary a noise about what's going on in Israel Palestine. I just think it's interesting because if you remember last time this happened in 2016, no. 2021 ish somewhere around there it was during COVID, i believe in the last kind of mm. flare up I, I will say um, oh okay where the black lives matter protests um no no it was specifically with israel and palestine like just this oh, exact okay, situation okay. happened again or mm. prior many voices in support to one side and it doesn't seem like that's happening this time i'm just it's just an observation i'm making um, I don't care who leans what way. I'm just interested that no one's really pioneering either side. Mm -hmm. I can think of Tamer Hussein is probably the only person I really see talking about it. And everyone else is kind of silent. And I think, I think it's obvious why, frankly. But what do you think? I think... I think in 2016, because I do remember when there was a, I guess, slight flare up. It was a flare up. I, I can't remember what happened. It wasn't... It, it was a terrorist attack in it was Israel, some type of mass like it, was, it definitely wasn't october uh six levels um yeah or october 7th excuse october me. 7th um, yeah no problem but i i think back then it was a it was an obscure type of topic to talk about because mm. even when october 7th happened it was 
well, I don't really understand it. I got to do research, both sides, blah, 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 blah. And then people either did the research, came back and was like, oh, fuck, shit's fucked. Yeah. Or they saw more. They saw the types of people who are actually getting gunned down and the types of people who are doing it. And they kind of put together that narrative thanks to, you know, the unfiltered TikToks and Twitters yes. uh, showing them how shit's really going. Um, so I think back then it was like a, it was still nebulous. It was still like, I don't really know what it is, but people had those Tamor Hussein's in their lives or yeah. their, uh, God, who's the guy who's uh, Ubisoft forward? The oh, host. Yusuf. Yusuf McGeed. McGeed, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, Yusef, they have those people in their lives. And I think you saw a couple of people in the games industry speaking out in 2016 because they had those people to explain the stuff to them directly or in, in their feeds. And they felt, you know, I'm going to say something about it. And then you saw a little bit of retaliation from that where, you know, I remember IGN India or something like that would saw them sharing articles. Oh, yeah. To, they to smacked Palestine. that down fast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they yeah. smacked that down back in 2016. I think yeah, they're like, now, you're fucking crazy <laughs> if you, if you exactly. think you're getting away with this. <laughs> exactly. And I think now, you know, people were really talking about this shit beginning of this year, late last year. That was like the highest height of discussion about the Israel Palestine conflict in not just the gaming space, but everywhere. I think we've come to the. I don't want to say conclusion because, mm. of course, this shit's not over and things can still move and no consequences can be had. But people have seen people have put, made a fuss about it. And what is being what is happening as a result of that fuss? They're trying to shut down TikTok. Uh, yeah. the, the president is even more bullish on all this stuff now. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's just everything's still just as blatant as it was at the beginning. But it seems like it's harder for just tweeting about it or just talking about it to really do much of anything substantial. And I think people look down on themselves and they're like, Hey, I, this is bad. This is a travesty. This should not be happening, but I gotta go get my paycheck. <laughs> I gotta go earn a living. I gotta go take care of my kids. I gotta go, you know, live my own life. Yeah. yeah. And you know, that's the cost of all that's the cost of like society or whatever, where it's like, hey, I gotta still be a member of the society. I can't just I can just leave and go be a protest and like be a martyr and put myself on the line. But like realistically, people crave the comforts of everyday life. So it's kind of hard to expect every single person to sit up there and do something. Yeah, but right. I do feel like, you know. We'll see what happens in November because <laughs> uh, I think that's really going to be a factor for people. And we'll see what happens with not just, you know, presidential elections, but all types of other elections, how people the social acceptance of talking about Israel and being with Israel, especially in the younger generation. It's going to be a lot different. So I question how long stuff like this can go on uninterrupted. But as far as like immediate action there's just a lot of opposition right now and people are scared one and two are just like, don't know how to come up against such massive opposition, like structural opposition. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I, um, to kind of put a bow on it, mm -hmm. I specifically found it so <sighs> troubling that, that neither side is anti-war, which is so strange. That's if any, any of them said, I'll get us out of the eight wars we're involved in right now. Be like, yeah, my vote. Uh, that's kind of all I really want to happen. Um, and it's mm. sad that it just seems like everyone's kind of like, we'll keep funding these random wars everywhere. And I don't know. It's, it's just so sad that we're, there's so much death happening. I here's the thing. It's, I'm not going to say what other people are saying because <laughs> I don't know the full landscape enough to be able to really combat you on that. But what I will say is I feel that it's kind of like if, if someone comes into your house and robs all your shit and then burns the house down and then right after the house has been burning for like a good like hour, then they're like, all right, sorry, we're done. We're done. We're stopping. Mm. And then they just they don't give your shit back. They don't build you a new house. They don't do any of that. They just stop harming you. And it's like, all right, great. My house is still burnt down. I still don't have anything to my name, et cetera, et cetera. And that's kind of the whole like ceasefire is absolutely what everyone I feel like at a baseline wants. Like that's the base 
that people want. They just want people to stop dying. Um, and I think if you really pressure most people, they want everyone to stop dying. Some people might, in the in the scheme of like, hey, you've done evil. Does evil now deserve to get done to you because you did evil? In that scheme, you can say whether or not certain people deserve to have certain things done to them. But I think if you press anybody, they'd be willing to accept, yeah, death is bad. Either way, either side, death is bad. So, of course, people want a ceasefire. But I think it goes beyond ceasefire where people want justice. Yeah, and ceasefire is but, step one of justice. Mm -hmm. If we're, I think people are already on the other steps. Yeah, if we're saying on Israel-Palestine, I, I, mm -hmm. it is a. I think we're now in an unwinnable situation. Unfortunately, there is no like. I don't. I mean, I don't think there'll be a peaceful resolution. Maybe there will. Um, and we have complete opposites through this one goal, one with having one have a one state solution for either or. I don't think one state would ever work, and that and for that to work, it is a horrifying thing needs to happen, which. I don't want to happen, but there is, I don't think there is, I don't know, but this specific issue is so, it is so complicated, because in reality, if you want to actually know a lot about this, you have to start, uh, what, 2,000 years ago or something like that, and then you have to go forward from that, and then you have to go in somewhere around the early 1900s and figure out what, like, it's very complicated. Something that is, it might be... I mean, it wasn't that the meme like when I was growing up anyways, it's like that was the that was the complicated situation that like that was the proposition in, in my high school when I was growing up in these like, hey, how would you fix it? And then, you know, mm. they would try and push you on either either way. If you had one, you know, it's, it's it's this is probably the one of the biggest issues that's going on right now. Probably if you if you really had to sit down and think about it, because each side wants a extreme solution i i think the way as americans what i think america can do is maybe start from the most recent point and look at the country that's only existed for 40 years <laughs> and say hey why does this country why did this country only exist for 30 years and why is america the biggest funder of it and why are we funding them to do this Maybe if we can mitigate the harm that we're actively contributing to, then we can leave space for the natives there to pick up the pieces, figure out what they need to. And I know we have that urge to say, hey, we need to help them rebuild. It's our obligation, blah, 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 blah. We obligate ourselves into a lot of shit that we don't have business being in as America. <laughs> so may i i the do the entirety think, of the middle east <laughs> absolutely absolutely and this is a this is an example of that it is so yeah. I, I think, you know, if we just got our fingers out of everybody's pies in the first place, then there'd be a lot less going on to look at in horror from over here. Um, I think first we need to be willing to let go of that shit, because I guarantee you we cut off funding in Israel. That's it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. there's only so long that they'll be able to continue the travesties and atrocities we've been seeing there. And then also, stop voting, stop having their back in the international, you know, votes and whatnot. When the, we're voting on if it's a genocide, our vote means so much that it vetoes everybody else's. So, like... And, and what's so, so strange is no one will say that in our yeah. electoral. Yeah. Even though you it, go in as our left own as AOCs, you know, your AOCs, your... You know, you want to go as left as possible. Uh, no mm -hmm. one will say it. No one will say the quiet part out loud. Like, well, it, you got both. Both extremes yeah. can be true in this specific situation, right? Hamas can be, a, you know, an animalistic terrorist unit, and Israel could have a completely disproportionate, clearly don't care about civilians as well. Both of those things can be true at the same time. And I don't understand why we can't just pretend like that is the case. And we have to be like, well, Israel is the most moral army ever, which is, I still can't believe that was a thing that they actually tried <laughs> to push. And then there, and then people are pretending like Hamas is this great, this great I think, power. I, look, I don't, both, both, yeah. both sides. It, and yeah. I hate always saying this. Cause I really do always say this. Both sides are just very gross. And I wish we could meet somewhere in the middle, but of course, both sides like are gross. You, you're, you're absolutely right. Both sides are gross, and there's some violent, murderous people on either side. Uh, in order to figure out what side 
I'm not even going to say what side to pick, but in order to more understand each side, you got to look at the history. You got to yeah. look at like, where is this feeling starting from? Is this a retaliation for decades of hardship and, and wrongdoing? Or is this a very specific, deep seated, planned out colonial project that didn't start from a natural place? It started from a purely manufactured, uh, you know, we we've created this artificially. Is it starting from a place of artificiality or a place of this was our natural land for hundreds of years? You got to look at it on each side. Um, and I let other people make that decision because look, I'm not I'm no historian. I've watched a couple of YouTube videos. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, also very I'm not going to sit here and with, tell you everything with like the mm -hmm. Jewish Bible and these things, saying like this is like almost the promised land. Then following the Holocaust, it gets so complicated when mm, when you really a lot of sit entitlement. Down. I remember um listening to oh god the last time this happened i remember very distinctly being like hey if you want to learn about the israel palestine conflict i recommend these three youtube videos i'm not shitting on you by the way that, that just reminded oh, me yeah, of this did. and it was three youtube videos each of them being about 10 to 15 minutes and i was like if you think you can understand this situation with about 50 minutes of learning I don't know what the fuck to tell mm. you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I don't know why why you would think that, but that just always stuck in my mind. This mm. is so fucking complicated, and I don't know. I Frank, I'll be frank. I, I have no idea how how this resolve what resolves in a anywhere near humane manner. I think uh, that's probably out the window by now. But I don't know. I mean, there's no way for it to resolve in a humane manner because, like, we've already this is already the second Dakba. So, like, yeah. that's out the window for anything positive now it's just like what's left and there are ways forward that could be peaceful i think it takes some acknowledgement of harm from people who have the most power to do said harm and i think it takes you know it's gonna take some type of trust that that harm won't come again but right now it's hard to believe that those who are doing the most harm will ever stop <laughs> yeah and what's it's hard to believe that the worst thing too is it would require like some sort of clearly it would require netanyahu out and then it would require Absolutely. someone so peaceful and like it will require... willing to mm -hmm. i don't like, like almost honestly... jesus like figure to like replace him it, very um ironic i know <laughs> it's, it's, i feel in this like specific situation but it that's would take a lot a, of trust in individual people <laughs> yeah yeah it would take a very uh, I don't even I, again I don't even know how you would do it. I, uh, oh, I, I don't Christ. think it would take one person. I think it would take masses of people. It would take generations, probably. Yeah. It would take yeah. like an entire generation of people being like, mm -hmm. we have to stop. And exactly. they just zero tolerance. Do don't don't want that. They I mean well, they I don't want obvious. that now. They don't want that now, but I feel like, you know, the kids grow up and they see the shit going on all the time. I I can't I can't believe that they're gonna think this is normal too. When the kids grow up, yeah, like yeah. our kids in this place, in this country, right? Yeah, I agree. And I was, I'm remembered by a, a, a social studies teacher that I actually had in high school. He was pretty much describing Iraq and like he was describing how a terrorist is made, pretty much. And it's like mm -hmm. you have to imagine how easy it is to be a terrorist when your town is being bombed, right? And then yeah, you have to think about like 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 a guy preaching like this is why we need to attack them, and 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 the behind them, a town a town is just being bombarded. And mm -hmm. I've, that's always stuck with me where I'm like, yeah, you know, when when you cause situation like this, it's almost like a and we literally see it in the Middle East, right? C cre mm -hmm. Creating ISIS and these things happen like, to us. It is Everyone signed up for the military. 9-11 just happened. Yeah. <laughs> cyclical, almost self-fulfilling mm -hmm. prophecy when you do things like this. Jesus Christ. This is the easy achievers game podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my this God. has been NPR. This Thank you been, for listening. This has been NPR. <laughs> um good lord emmett <laughs> <laughs> so the joke is in multiverses enjoy that y'all bye yeah yeah uh, mark hamill <laughs> i gotta put hold on let me put a time stamp fill in some time here there we absolutely go. absolutely so it's easier to find later anyways just in case you click the thing <laughs> skip to this point <laughs> emmett I ask you a question every single time you are with me. This is no different. And of course, I ask you at home to ask and I uh, sorry to answer. What have you been playing now? This, of course, can be a video game. 
uh, recent past, really anything, comment below, tweet at me at New Year 1000. Let me know what you've been playing. But Emmett, I want to ask mm. you right now, what have you been playing? Um, one of the things I've been playing, I cannot say, and it is something that I am under embargo for mm. a review that will be coming the week after you see this video. Uh, so look out May 14th around my socials. You'll hear about that game. Uh, I'm excited to be able to talk about it. <laughs> I'll say it like that. So I don't get myself in trouble. GTA um, but 6. other, let me tell you, GTA 6 <laughs> is crazy, man. I can't fucking believe it's still at 30 frames a second. Um, anywho, <laughs> um, but other than that, I've been playing a bit of Stray Blade, a lot more of Stray Blade, actually. Um, for those of you who don't know, Stray Blade is a Souls-like action adventure game. Uh, and what I've been describing it to people is it is Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning mixed with Darksiders 3. <laughs> Which is to say the kind of art style of Kingdoms of Amalur where it's high fantasy, uh, a little bit mystical, but kind of more grounded than that uh but very colorful very like vibrant artistic style and kind of like a little bit of a whimsy to it as well um and darksiders 3 because darksiders 3 was very very inspired by the souls like genre uh and it wasn't all the way there but it just it just had the same momentum had the same hey you gotta plan out your attacks learn how people are swinging and be really deliberate about everything in that game um and so this is a souls like where the big thing is parrying uh you parry attacks just like you would expect in a Sekiro or something like that but it's not quite as fast as something like a like a Sekiro so it's very deliberate and the big gimmick here is you rank up and you get skill points just like every other game but the the talent tree is not just a straight by your skills along a linear path each point each attribute that you can unlock is attached to a weapon and you have to find that weapon craft that weapon and then rank that weapon up in order to unlock the skill tree attribute. So it really encourages you to use every single weapon in the game. And I'll be honest, a lot of these weapons, you got some really big maces that are really slow. <laughs> so it's a lot of patience that I'm having to use when using weapons. Uh, some good swords, some good uh, spears and all that. It's a lot of weapon variety. So you're going through weapon to weapon. And once you've ranked up the weapon fully, you get a special attack to use with it. You can finally unlock the little, you know, bonus health, bonus stamina, bonus damage to light attacks, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, And it's very solid. It's very fun. It just came out on uh, PlayStation Plus Extra. That's where I'm playing it right now. But I've had it on Steam for a while. It's just PC port doesn't run all that stably. So I've been playing on PS5. Uh, but it's very good. So highly recommend that. Uh, well, Highly is strong. It's like a solid like 8 out of 10, 7.5 out of 10, if I'm being completely honest with you. I've been skipping the cutscenes at this point. Don't care about the story. It does have good vo voice acting and all that. The story is probably pretty decent, but at a certain point, I just was like, I'm not here for the story. And so I just started skipping. Um, but that's really good. And pff, I don't know. Have I been playing anything else of import? Um, I'll say I've been hopping back into New Vegas. Uh, ah, you followed the wave. Oh, yeah, I followed the wave. I followed the wave before I got into the boat or what? on the surfboard. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what's how do you ride a wave? Um, honestly, I, I jumped back into New Vegas because I saw everyone talking about the TV show. Yes. And yeah. before I even started the show, I remember you tweeted was, this. It pissed me the hell off. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm going to play out following Vegas. Maybe I'll check out the show this weekend or something. I was like, you're son of a bitch. You're son of a bitch. I'll, <laughs> I'll say now I'm on it. I've watched episode three, so I'm a good chunk into the show. I'm watching more you and I'm enjoying it. it. Are you, are you liking it? I am liking okay. it indeed. Okay. It is uh it's one of those things where it's not that it's slow, but it feels like it's building towards something. Mm. And so because I know that there's something coming at the end, every step there when it's not uh, when it's not directly going towards it, I feel like all right, we're we're sidetracking. Like when you go on a side quest but you know the main quest is going to pop off mm -hmm. something, it's like, all right, the side quests, it, it really better be it better be worth the diversion. So that's kind of where I'm at with the show, yeah. but I'm going to keep with it. That's so funny you say that, because I did hear other people say that where it's like it's, you know, it's slow in the beginning. I was like, really? It's, I, di I just didn't feel that. But also, I'm not a show guy. I'm not a mm. movie dude. So, I, you know, I, I have less probably to compare to or I might not have that critical look. But I, I did feel like it was like very quick and I was always interested in the next episode. Like that is something like I watched it all in three days, I think, because I watched two. Goddamn. I watched 
two a day, and then the last day was the rest of them. And I lo- I loved me and my wife. Um, just I mean I lo- I loved that show. It was it's very very good show. Um, mm-hmm. but really quick. Um, you were bringing up Stray Blade. I do want to highlight if you Ooh, do yeah. want to check out Stray Blade. It is sixty percent off on Steam right now. Uh, mm-hmm. If you would like to go uh, play that, I wanted to quickly highlight because I always bring up whatever you talk about because it's always some game. I don't know what the fuck's going on with. And that is a good example. And then, yeah, 60 percent off. So go check it out. I think it's definitely worth thirteen dollars. So the way you exactly. said it, it, I think it's definitely worth that thirteen, fourteen yeah. uh, dollar price tag. Yeah, try it out there. Or, of course, PlayStation Plus Extra is right there. That is free well. to access. So hop on it. Um, but yeah, Fallout, the Fallout show is good. I'll say I agree with you that the first episode is really good and got me engaged immediately. So good. It's it's episode two and three where I'm like, all right, mm, we're yeah. here, we're going, mm-hmm. let's keep this up. Um, and so I'm, but I'm having fun. I'm gonna keep watching. Very excited to see what the ending is. Um, which I've heard certain things about, which leads me to say, uh, yeah, hop back into New Vegas. Yeah. Uh, and it's good. I, I don't know what to tell you now. Yeah. The thing that pissed me off or not pissed me off, but I found frustrating. I kind of just gave up on this last night. I have been trying to mod Fallout New Vegas using a specific mod pack. I think Viva New Vegas is the name of it. Um, And it basically just adds a bunch of patches to the game, improves the visuals just a little bit, uh, adds the a better reticles. So it's not just a dot in the middle of your screen that doesn't show you the cone of where your bullets could go. Uh, adds hit markers, adds a whole bunch of like, features that don't alter the game a million percent so i went through that mod list on my pc installed everything synced up everything got everything working and first time i did it for an hour and a half something didn't work and so i deleted everything said i'll try again later later came took me like almost three hours to download everything set everything up and double test double test and then it worked so i was like hell yeah and so i was playing fallout new vegas it was good but then i fucked up because one of the mods they recommend it's like hey if you want the game to play closer to the original vision from the fallout creator from the original creative director of new vegas install this mod and it basically makes everything harder <laughs> and i'm oh, like oh yeah survival okay. mode kind of yeah well, i, re- I remember that was a, mode. oh is it not like that because i remember that was like the creative director at that time I think in like an interview in like Game Informer or something. Maybe that's not true, but I remember hearing that like, yeah, they were like really pimping survival. I was like, we really like you playing this way. Uh, so I, that's why I thought that's why I thought you were going. What what did it? What was you? What were you saying? Survival mode's cool, but like survival mode is mainly just hey, all this food and water and stuff. Yeah. It's not just health boost now. Mm-hmm. It's you have a reason to collect food specifically and water specifically, and your bullets mean more, so you got to make yep. every shot count. And that type weigh. of thing exactly they weigh so it's like you if you only got 50 50 bullets because they weigh something now yeah so that type of thing um this mod i I believe it's called vigor is the name of the mod which is careful avert it's a twist on well i know yeah Uh, actually you're fine you're fine (laughs) (laughs) oh wow i just got that you motherfucker um but yeah so that's the original the original mod is basically the same vigor mod but it's increases the level cap the original mod only brought it down to 20 and that was the base cap this leaves it at 50 as in the base game okay but it gives you less xp for every single kill bullets do way more damage to you um your carry limit is way more restricted uh food heals you way slower you can't find food and everything you know you go to a random trash can and just find find some some crayon apples yeah you won't find shit in this game with this mod on it It was so difficult (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I I played for a good two hours that way, and I was like, "What the fuck am I doing?" Yeah, so I turned I, I, off the mod and kept playing. That sounds that like all... a worse game for me specifically. I'm Ooh. sure people are like salivating uh, right it now listening so to you say I... that, but for me, I'm like, nah, no, no, no. Yeah, I was trying to play. I was just trying to play through the main quest, like just go straight forward through it, and I immediately just got my ass kicked. I couldn't kill one enemy in the little building that I had to save a guy from. Not one enemy without dying. Dude had a flamer. That had one hit. Couldn't do it couldn't do it so un- uninstalled that mod and i've been having fun ever since uh now what i gave up on is trying to get the exact same mod list running on steam deck which is possible people okay. have done it okay. i have i was walking through a walkthrough of it on github and i was trying to follow all the steps i don't know what it is it refuses to work for me 
And I tried that for a good four hours last night, gave up. So now I'm just not going to play Fallout New Vegas on my Steam Deck, but I will come back to my PC every now and then and run through it because it's really good. Higher, going way over 160 frames at mm-hmm. this point. Like it's just beautiful. Yeah, five million probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, game. whatever my screen handles. So probably like <laughs> 200. <laughs> oh, I have been playing Stella Blade. Um, if yeah, you like nice. my early impressions on the game, there's a video on this very channel. Actually, you can go check out. I don't really have too much else to add from that specific um, video I put up. I like the game. I I should actually say I love the game. I think I like it actually more than a lot of other people. So mm-hmm. take that with what you will, I guess. But uh, I am like- near the end. I've been doing everything I possibly can. Um, I am on the i believe uh last level or either, or the level before last pretty much um i guess i won't spoil the name of it but it's it's i'm pretty sure it's the last level very close to the very end of the game i will probably try and platinum the game because um i'm just enjoying it so much and all it would require is one more playthrough which you could speed through so mm. i will probably try that um as nice. uh, I did follow a guide for the cans, which is the collectible in the game, which I liked very much. Um, it's kind of these cute little just soda cans you pick up. She points it at the screen oh. and goes okay. like, ah, look, it's a can. And it's like a little can funny flavor text. Yeah, can do. And <laughs> on top of that, I have been very much enjoying the actual gameplay, although I find it a little sad that they wait a while to give you all the tools. Because I can imagine people playing this game at the beginning kind of feeling like oh is this the game all right whatever but not getting quite to where you would get these things called burst skills and this thing called um i won't spoil the name of the mode because it spoils what it is but this a very specific strong mode that you get in the game and that's when this the game really i think shines but you wouldn't necessarily get there yeah but yeah plank mode um (laughs) <laughs> and when you and if you don't get there i feel like that's when the game actually does shine i will say everything i've heard about the game is probably true the narrative kind of weak um i am interested in the narrative up to a certain point i would say about halfway through the game the narrative kind of has degraded to the point where it's not nearly as interesting unless something happens in the eighth hour or the last hour of the game that maybe gets me like back interested but the premise was very good um, but the actual execution, I don't feel like is is doing very well. And I think actually the weakest point of this game, although I, I like the narrative up more than other people, I think actually the dialogue's pretty bad, especially when you're talking mm. to somebody. It doesn't really feel like there's a conversation happening. It just kind of feels like someone's saying a line and then the other person says a line. It doesn't really feel fluid and it doesn't feel like um, really experiencing it with everyone in the game, uh, especially with your kind of companions. I just don't feel like we're really like friendly it just kind of feels like we're all just together um and we're we're supposed to be friendly because the narrative said we are not because any specific situation happened that made everyone like each other more or anything like that um mm-hmm. so that's one i think major problem with the game hopefully uh shift up learns a lot from this and puts it forward to another game i will say um the game is really, 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 really trying to be near and nowhere close to that. <laughs> nowhere close. It gets close. I can imagine. Um, in terms of literally looking like near and, and and trying to be near in a lot of ways, but I think it actually misses a lot of um the good stuff with near. If like if you ask someone who played near, they usually say the narrative is the best part, or the way they tell you the narrative is one of the best parts, not necessarily Oh, I like it because the combat's good in these things. But I will say there is a lot to love. For Tom and I would say that, but yes. <laughs> yeah, the, I will say there is a lot to love about uh, the game. I love the many outfits. It's like you play a little bit of dress up every now and then. Um, I like doing it semi-realistically. So I like I, I'll change my outfit every kind of area done kind of, you know, so it kind of makes sense. You know, you change your outfit because you finish the level. It feels like a day has passed. So I change it then. Uh, mm-hmm. so, and again, loving the game. I like these, the aspects they've kind of melded together. Hopefully, um, I actually hope they, uh, because we already know shift up is working on another game, uh, mm-hmm. that, that is a new IP, I believe. Uh, yes. I hope they actually ditch DLC for this and just focus on a second game after they're done with that. Uh, because I think they, they could learn a lot from the misses of this game. Cause there is a lot here. There's a lot of potential. Uh, and 
unfortunately the although the gameplay gets better the i feel like the narrative actually gets worse the more you play the game but wow. i do still recommend it it's hmm. just you I... have to know what you're getting i'm happy about the 70 dollars i paid for it um but i wouldn't blame someone for waiting for a sale especially with what i'm saying like maybe wait for like 50 dollars or something pick it up then yeah, I'm definitely going to be waiting on a sale just mainly because I can't justify $70 for any single thing right now. Mm. Uh, so, you know, that's where I'm at. But it's a game that I've been very interested and excited about for a couple of years now. I actually think uh, you would love it. Um, I, I think I would. Kind of similar to how I like it. You would, you would know you would notice the failings, but like I think you would still enjoy the game. And again, mm -hmm. it is really trying to be near Automata. It's trying to be Bayonetta. It is. It is. It feels like it kind of smushed a lot of games together to try and kind of get the because it kind of feels like they played a game and were like let's have this part in the game and, and this part and, and. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I mean look i love i love a game in which a woman just beats ass like yeah. that's one of my favorite genres um i'm i'm a proud owner of blades of time and if you don't know what blades of time is oh. blades of time is the remake of a different game that they did not have the budget to make originally but then they got the budget to make it and that original game was x blades <laughs> Yeah. If people remember that one. Um, so, yeah, I love this genre. Uh, and I've been really getting deep into Souls Likes, too. Of course, I'm, I feel like I'm playing a Souls Like every other week at this point. Yeah. I'm um, just dipping my toes in a bunch of them. So, this is absolutely up my alley. I can't wait for it to be up my disk drive in my PS5 at mm. some point soon. I tried to flip that. I don't feel great it. about it. <laughs> All right. Thanks. <laughs> I was going to get draked pretty soon on that line. Yeah, you were. Yeah. <laughs> A minor. Oh no! Uh, to quickly add, I did not cover this in the my ten hour experience with the game video, so I will I quickly cover it here. There was a small, I will say, very small controversy that was completely blown out of proportion, like the game industry does all the time, where we, for some reason, care about what half of these people are talking about. People were saying this game was censored, etc., because one specific outfit had less cleavage in an updated version than the first version. Now, I would maybe, maybe be behind on you with the censorship if there weren't 10 other outfits that were way more revealing than the one you guys picked. So I really don't understand that. Mm -hmm. It is clear that if you had a problem with that, you did not play the game and you should probably shut the fuck up about it. Uh, aside from that, I want to move on from that because I frankly think people gave it more air than it even deserved. Like, who cares mm -hmm. what, frankly, these people agree. have to. And you know what? I'm going to say something. I hope this does not offend anyone out there uh, because I don't say things to be offensive. I just tell you, I'm just being honest. If you really, if you saw the clips on petition.org, and you saw the clips of people saying why they think that you should sign Ugh. this petition about the game. That is who we're talking to when you like make these small controversies. And like that's that's the other side of the tweet when you're arguing about them. I don't I'm not trying to make fun of those people specifically, but I'm just pointing out that that's that's who you're trying to have this kind of rational conversation with. And we should probably just move on. And might not like be kinda, worth it. Yeah, it might not be worth it because just if you saw the clips on the petition.org and you saw them talk, I feel like you could put two and two together and be like, yeah, maybe my time isn't worth arguing with a specific individual that is like this. Mm -hmm. Moving on. I concur. That is the nicest way I can put it. <laughs> <laughs> A rumor roundup I'll say there it's will not be nice. Fuck your wife. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> rumor roundup will not be happening this week. One, because we have a giant news story already. Two, couldn't find any rumors that I was like, oh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. So I have a good rumor. Drake might be a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> you a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> We thought the same. Thing. Uh, yeah, I, that, that's that's a good rumor. Roundup is Drake maybe a pedophile? I, not even maybe. I've seen the clips that have been going around. That dude definitely has banged a minor. I don't. And at yeah. the very least, has done yeah. more than what you should with a minor. Uh, just with video evidence alone, let alone like what mm -hmm. he probably did. And the thing, I, I I do love that Kendrick's <laughs> the YouTube picture was just his house with the predators. That is like the best way. I mean, you could have just released that 
And like that, so genius on his part. But yeah, that dude is. I I've collected all of the songs in this whole entire beef into one YouTube playlist, and right now it's called Dot vs Drake. I'm thinking of changing the title to Alien vs Predator. Yeah, Alien vs Predator. Yeah, that's probably the best <laughs> way of putting this. Um, there was a yeah. There's that was everywhere. Drake, yeah, Drake is public enemy number one. I have, I just as a to say it again. I've had people not know because I I had a buddy that I played Destiny with. And I was like, hey, do you? pay attention to like hip hop or rap at all. And he was like, no, no, I, I don't really know anything about it. The next morning he texted me. I was like, what is going on? It is all over my Reddit. Can you like, tell me what's going on? <laughs> and I sat there and wrote like paragraphs of, of, of explaining like, all right, well, this happened, this happened, you know, boom, cut boom, the, the, yeah, yeah. And it really has bled into like culture, which is, which is so fun. It, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's, it's fun. And uh, Drake, um, I, I never loved Drake. But I, it's not as a like, oh, you know, I thought he was a pedo. It, that wasn't the reason. It's just I never I just I don't know something about him. I was like, I've prayed on his downfall for almost a decade. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I don't like him. I don't like his shtick, his kind of weirdness. And I heard about the Atlanta stuff, too. And of course, being so close to Atlanta, I was like, if that mm-hmm. is true, like you should probably go fucking go fuck yourself. Um. It's true for a bunch of cities, not yeah, just Atlanta. Yeah, it is not just Houston, Atlanta. the UK, the, U- the yeah. Caribbean. Yeah, <laughs> and the way he cherry, the whole other thing. Mm-hmm. But that specific, I, it, I've a, and that, and I heard about that, and like, I had a buddy that told me that, and like, I don't even know, twenty, probably twenty nineteen. Yeah, something. Not, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. And it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I mean, at the very, I don't even know if he could show his face anymore. Frankly, on it, I don't. I, that he was pretty roughly destroyed. <laughs> Uh, it's like that basketball meme. Time to learn Chinese, buddy. Yeah, time to learn. Chi- yeah, time. <laughs> but time go somewhere as they else. said, you know what? I'm not going to talk too much about it because we talked about this on Welcome to the Thing, which I'll shout out later. Yeah. But you know, he can have a career, they just can. not in hip hop anymore. Yeah, yeah. He, he definitely can, and he was already a hybrid of hip hop and pop kind of shit. So I mean, he might just mm-hmm. lean into pop more or something. Or, but like, he's lost all credit. I mean, when you see Rick Ross playing at his party and being like, I heard you were a chomo with a giant cigar in your mouth showing (laughs) 50,000 people dancing to it. Yeah. You probably are in a rough spot. Yeah. Once the baddies are twerking that you're a pedophile, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of baddies (laughs) twerking to it. I I noticed that too. I was like, wow, they had this. And maybe I'm wrong here, but as far as I understand, diss tracks are not something you listen to a lot. It's kind of a moment. No, it's common. A moment. And then you move on. This is like back to back was the first time that happened. Yeah. And now here we are. This is <laughs> with something... the same thing happening to the guy who made that song. This is this is this is like playlist worthy. Like this is gonna be in people's mm-hmm. rotation, and this will remind people why they don't like Drake now. Like this is like a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's probably over for that guy. The fourth, uh, I think the fourth fastest listened whatever rap song yeah. of all time on spotify charts yeah like it's crazy yep and it's like his number one ever or something like that 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 mm-hmm. released this morning yeah. i should have actually like read it's his what fastest it was there, number but it was one like ever. his fastest number one it was this all these stats i was like god and it was all because you tore this man apart <laughs> like you just verbally mm-hmm. just destroyed him love it you a Absolutely six nine god it. Freakier. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the show for the week. I want everyone to strap in. This is long, lengthy, so please give me some time to fully break it down for you. If you follow gaming news, you have no doubt heard the unfortunate news of even more studio closures hitting the industry. This time it is from some of Xbox's Bethesda branch of studios closing. These are to include Arcane Austin, responsible for Redfall and 2017's Prey. Alpha Dog Studios, a mobile team behind Mighty Doom. Roundhouse Games, which will be melded into ZeniMax Online Studios. And Tango Gameworks, the studio behind the Evil Within games and Hi-Fi Rush. This is no doubt linked to the previous 1900 planned staff cuts that hit the Xbox brand three months ago. And this could be um, actually a continuation of that specific 1900 Or this could be an entirely different branch of cuts that need to happen. Uh, uh, Of course, to us, that's technically unclear because it's not like we can really sit down and count out if this includes the 1900 cuts of this, etc. Yeah. Frankly, it's semantics. I will be moving on now. 
Mm-hmm. This sent shockwaves throughout the industry as many sounded off on Twitter voicing their concerns for the seemingly weakening brand of Xbox itself as they have recently switched to a more open third party position following releasing Hi-Fi Rush on PlayStation as well as Rare Studio Sea of Thieves, Petsamint on Switch and PlayStation and Grounded hitting Switch and PlayStation as well. As always, I like to include some messages from Twitter by both people directly affected and people reacting to it. Here's some of them now. So this is Thomas Mailer. This is the CEO and creative director of Moon Studios. Uh, quote, to everyone who's been pestering me for years about why we didn't allow Moon Studios to get published by a big publisher, that's why. I lived through the 90s and saw what happened when smaller studios got acquired by EA. Never again, end quote. I'm going to take a quick pause there to add in mm. some context to that specific yeah. situation. Because yep. Moon Studios, he is being very deceptive with what he's said. Moon Studios is was very well known for when they probably were being shot by Microsoft for being incredibly, incredibly horribly managed in a toxic environment throughout like to Mm -hmm. to a t there was a giant op-ed you can actually read about that could be why microsoft didn't want to touch them ever maybe even ever again after ori and probably might not have even offered them anything because they probably either heard from or saw what was going on and went we can't have that smoke so let's move on uh, which I is just ironic because they later bought Activision. <laughs> yeah, they bought Activision, which uh, they'll they'll take a little bit of sexual abuse for a Call of Duty, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pro- <laughs> yeah. Probably the most circulated reaction to all this is Mike Ibarra's former president of Blizzard. He states the following. Again, please stick with me here. I see a lot of shots at Phil over today's Xbox announcements. I get it, but knowing him as a human, I know this hurts him as much as anyone else. I can't speak for all the leadership there, but I do know him, and I do know what he is likely going through. I'm not trying to defend the decisions. I think we all get ourselves in situations that are tough and unexpected. I certainly have. It's part of the job, as is the accountability for the outcomes. But he's a good human, and he cares deeply for the creative process and developers. That's my first-hand experience in working closely with him for 8-plus years and knowing him for 24-plus. I 100% understand the anger and confusion, and I feel deeply sorry for those teams impacted today and over the last few months. I don't agree with every decision he made at Xbox, and I think that was pretty clear. But I do believe in his product leadership, and I know how hard these decisions can be. Xbox could have a very bright future. I hope they are able to realize it. And all of the teams have an incredible experience together. It's certainly a tough time that needs great clarity into what the plan ahead is and how gamers everywhere can be excited for it. We're going to take a break there and really uh, dig this down because mm. I think this was actually probably the most thing people have reacted to, retweeted, replied to him, etc. I will give my piece. I will throw it to you, Emmett, after that if you'd like to say anything yes. extra. I will say I think he is missing the point. Uh, no one, mm-hmm. I don't think saw this and went phil is the scum of the earth i I don't really think anyone rational thought that uh and if you did think that don't think it's worth spending your time on twitter writing out a giant opinion piece on why phil spencer is a unique guy and especially it doesn't make the situation any better so i'm curious on what mikey barra's goal was behind this because frankly one thing people will say about phil spencer that's pretty much agreed on is that he seems like a good guy he won't really answer any questions that are worth answering and he'll completely divert any question that you try to answer. And he's buttered up a lot of people in the industry uh, to the point where they mm-hmm. won't ask him pressing questions. I always bring up the Jess Corden situation where he had yeah. Phil for 10 minutes, 20 minutes or something uh, and didn't press him on anything. So I will bring that up as uh, a specific part uh, of that problem I have with what he's saying. I get it. But I think it's pretty much agreed upon that Philly is seemingly a very nice guy, and I don't think that was ever questioned. So I don't know why Mike took the time to write this. And uh, Mike, I'm not trying to be a dick here, but if you liked it so much, why'd you leave? So you left twice. <laughs> you left twice. So you so you like working bar. with Phil. <laughs> you like working with Phil so much. You left twice. So I, I I get it. You know you're a millionaire many many times over, but I think you're definitely missing the entire point, and it's very easy to. Uh, write your argument off because uh, Phil's okay. Phil can uh, do the meme mm-hmm. with the money and wipe the tears away with his with his cash. Yep, with his absolutely many many. Ma- I'm, we're talking. He might be close to a B with Microsoft yeah. options. He might have earned, et cetera. You know, it, he could. Stock, it, it, that's not out of the realm. If he got in, because he he's been working there for a while and a CEO for ten years. Uh, mm-hmm. 
the stock options is where you're going to make a lot of money. Microsoft has gotten fat on the stock market mm-hmm. in those 10 years. If he has held on to all of those options, you're talking about a lot of money. So I don't... Absolutely. You can attack it from many angles and kind of break this all up to make it not mean much. So what did you have to say about this? Uh, I'm, again, not ta- I'm not attacking anyone personally here. That is just what my first reaction when I saw this tweet. What, do you have anything to add? I think you're right. Uh, I think it's beyond the point of whether or not Phil's a good guy or not. People aren't mad at him because they think he's some some wolf in sheep's clothing. I think they're mad because you, we've seen him eat crow for bad decisions and bad things happening in the company he's supposed to be overseeing. And we don't want to see him eat crow. We don't want to see him eat humble pie. We want to see people keep their jobs. And if it takes your salary decreasing if it takes salaries of multiple people in higher up positions decreasing to keep these people on board then so be it that's what should happen and it's more frustrating once we talk about the reasons that some of these places were closed so um can i can i push yeah. a little bit please, so please. i do see this say it a lot and i actually don't know how much he makes I will say when you do when you say things like, oh, you know, take less money, I actually do agree to some extent. But you do get to a point where a lot of money probably isn't anything to a lot of these studios. For instance, if we bring up something like let's say there's a studio that's like. Say there's 50 people there, right? And he takes a cut Mm -hmm. of half his salary. Let's say he makes 200 million. That's 100 million. That will fund the studio for like a year. So maybe he can keep doing that or something. But. Although I'm not defending that you should on face value, you should do that um, if there are troubles ahead. And I think this is actually a situation where you should probably say, like, hey, um, pay me less money and um, make that salary divest into X, Y, Z studio. You should probably do that one, because I, I don't even understand how you get this much money and still care about money. If I was given one hundred million dollars, I don't even know what I would do with that mm-hmm. much money. So, like, I actually agree optically at the very least. You should do that. But unfortunately, in America, that is not a thing. Japanese are very well known for doing things of those practices where they'll cut their salaries. Um, Awada, famous for that. Yeah. Rest in peace. Um, he was famous for that. He, he, I think one year didn't take a salary or something like that um, to make sure people didn't have to lose their jobs. I think uh, he didn't take his bonus that year. Yeah, it was something of that nature. The Wii U era, um, Nintendo mm-hmm. of America, and a lot of people cut their salaries, so people didn't have to do it. Even it will prepare you for the long run. Now, if you get to with the size of our Microsoft, I don't know how you would just, just you know, you, I don't know how much he's making, so I don't know how much he could feel a studio. But uh, I think it should be much more customary in America because that is not something you ever see, uh, ever. Absolutely. Uh, it, I don't know why. Because again, I don't I even know, know what you do with all this money. I, I okay, I know why. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, like, what would you even? I don't even understand. I mean, I wouldn't. I'd be like, don't pay me this year, and then mm-hmm. figure out that money somewhere I, else or something. I don't know. I mean, look, I, I'd love to say that the buck stops at Phil, but Phil is only the head of Xbox. There is an entire Microsoft corporation above and around him. There is money within that corporation to keep these companies going. There just is. Yeah, but absolutely. Yeah, but and like who has to lose it? That's the question. Where is it coming from? Something has to be taken out of one bucket to get put into another. If you really care about these studios, you will fight tooth and nail to make that happen. That's true. And and if you ask me, I would be like, Phil probably didn't. Uh, Mm -hmm. He was probably told and he probably, you know, followed orders. Um, Absolutely. Frankly, he probably doesn't have that much power when, uh, you know, Natia says, well, this is the time we to will money. what little power you have. Yeah, when I agree. You, yeah, when you have a studio that just made a game that was a hit by all metrics, and it, it was Look. excellent by everyone's agreeing, and it came out on another platform and is still making money, making new money on new platforms, and he just closed the whole studio. Let's, like that's when ju- you stand up and say that's fucked up. Let's stupid. jump. Let's jump to that. Let's jump to that. Actually, you yeah, brought it let's up. Jump. It's, it's yeah, um yeah. very natural. Let's go. Tango GameWorks has seen the brunt of the attention from the closers that they just released high, a highly well-received game in Hi-Fi Rush early last year, widely acclaimed to be the best Xbox release in many years. As covered on this show, the founder of the studio left this studio a few months ago and started a new studio actually called 
uh, Camus, I think is how you pronounce that, around March of this year. Mm. Of course, this calls on the question if the studio was closed due to him leaving, maybe taking a few of his staff with him, or it could just be a coincidence. Could Shinji even have known about the closure prior and this maybe hastened his leave? Tango was opened in 2010 and has released Evil Within 1 and 2, Ghostwire Tokyo, and Hi-Fi Rush. Now, before we get into a whole new thing that was broken out by Jason Schreier, literally 10, 20, 10, 20 minutes before we were going to go live, let's go back to what you were saying. So I, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Now, not many people, I feel like, are talking about this, and they're missing a very valuable point. Shinji left. He's the founder. He might have been... What kept that studio open? I'm not trying to put blame on him for closing the studio, but that might have led to an easier decision to close the studio. Or maybe he saw something going on and was like, because he he was very open saying, like, I've been trying to leave for a while because I wanted to make smaller, different games, and I can't do that here pretty much. Uh, okay. So maybe that's related. Maybe not. I don't know. But I have to agree, Emmett. You have a studio work on this game he was very vocal with saying i wasn't i tried to not be involved with this because i wanted them to know what a game how to make a game without me here so from all all angles you kind of see why would you close this studio that is very very strange because if there's one thing y'all are missing it's hits and you had one and you squandered well, it it's you're missing hits and you're missing a presence in Japan. They've talked all up and down. Oh, we got to work with Atlas. We got to work with Sega. We yeah. got to work with all these Japanese developers and creators and publishers. We need inroads in Japan. That was your one Japanese studio and, gone. And this kind of proves that that was that's they don't give a shit. Yeah, about Japan. They don't give a I, shit they, about they Japan. Care. They don't care. They, they really don't. They've they lost really don't. and they they're like, who cares? Um, and I, and I looking think that's at Jason. Now. Oh. Oh, yeah, please, go it's ahead. definitely obvious now. Looking at the Jason Stryer article, I got to find where I saw this at. But uh, it seems like some of the motivation, or not some of the motivation, but some of the things that were happening when these decisions were made, it seems like Arcane Austin, you know, creators of Redfall, but before yes. that, Prey and all these other great games, they were pitching, hey, let's get back to our immersive sim roots. Let's do something like a Dishonored 3. That's what they were pitching to Microsoft at the time. Since again, we're going and, so natural. Let's go. Let's go ahead and, br and bring this in. This is via Jason mm -hmm. Schreier. Moments before going live via Bloomberg. So these are a couple snippets. Quote: Xbox still isn't done cutting costs. Sent voluntary buyout offers to some of Zenimax staff. So to try and buy them out of their contracts, they offered f upfront costs. That's great. That's that's pretty crazy. That means they need to. That means they were told save money. That means a lot of people there probably have more. very high salaries, and they are trying to get mm -hmm. them out. Uh, and that's that's the end of that. Activision purchase has increased scrutiny on Xbox internal. I gotta say a layup on that one. I I predicted that um, this very purchase kind of fucks Xbox in a specific way that might get more attention because they're spending all this money. So this is money. this is the biggest mm -hmm. Microsoft purchase ever, and it's into Activision. This might have bit them in the ass. I don't know if Phil saw this coming. I don't know if maybe they didn't they didn't know it would take this long to buy it because of the FTC holdings and um, Europe holding it for so long. But mm -hmm. I think that is a brilliant point to bring up and something I've been saying. I think this might have shot him in the foot. He was able to kind of scoot by. No one really cared about Xbox, but now the shareholders your higher ups, they see, hey, we're we're about to spend seven, nearly seventy billion dollars, sixty nine billion dollars on this acquisition. Mm -hmm. Or they're like, well, okay, well, this isn't since we're spending this much money. This must be a vector where we increase our money in our shares. Let's start analyzing it, and I feel like that kind of broke it apart. So let's actually go to the article. Matt Booty mm -hmm. uh, had a town hall meeting on Wednesday morning, stating that the closure were caused by the company being spread too thin, like quote peanut butter on bread, end quote. Matt Booty said the closure of Arcane Austin had nothing to do with Redfall's performance. That's a fucking lie. I don't believe that for a second. And Jason <laughs> writes, Arcane Austin were looking into making another first-person sim game like their Dishonored series, even possibly 
returning to it. Let's finish this out with this excerpt that I, I grabbed from the article. Jill Braff, head of Zenimax Studios, said in the town hall that she hopes the reorganization will allow the division, which also develops Fallout and Doom, to put more focus on fewer projects. Quote, it's hard to support nine studios all across the world with a lean central team with an ever-growing plate of things to do, end quote, she said. According to audio of the meeting reviewed by Bloomberg, quote, I think we're about to topple over. I think, sorry, I think we were about to topple over, end quote, she added. I don't know what that means. Both Tango and Arcane released games last year and were looking to hire additional staff as they pitch new projects, which Booty and Braff suggested was the main factor behind their closure. Jiji yeah. Bikami, <laughs> Don Tango's founder and studio departed last year. Let's let's uh, throw it back to you. Um, yeah, this is the thing I was pissed off about where uh, Arcane, they were talking about, hey, Dishonored 3, let's work on that. Uh, we didn't even want to make Redfall. That was a mandate by the previous company holders. Yep. Now that that's finally off our backs and that's hitting the sunset, let's make a real game. And same thing for Tango. Hey, we just made High Fire Rush and it's great and everybody loved it. Let's make another one. Microsoft saw that and said, hey, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. They need, they need again. new hires. They need X, exactly. Y, Z. This will cut us the most money off because they are about to start a project. Because mm -hmm. it's like, hey, because th the thing is, especially in the case of Hi-Fi Rush, that is a safe investment. It is a good call to make a sequel to a game that was successful by all of your own metrics. That is an absolutely sound call to do. You can ask, you can ask a couple more questions about Arcane because, you know, a lot of the team left. Redfall are different people who made Redfall versus the original Dishonored games, et cetera, et cetera. I can understand being shaky on that. But to eliminate the whole studio, this is very short-sighted. Absolutely short-sighted. And it goes against the core tenets that they've been preaching with Game Pass, where it's like, oh, everything will be subsidized through Game Pass. You know, we give everything away for free and we just make sure that we're on every screen. Eventually, the money will work out. Well, then what the fuck is this? Because yep. I thought the whole point wasn't to depend on just the big marquee titles. There have you it paced go. Out. There you and go. Thank you so much. I mean, we are very simpatico with this. What mm -hmm. was the cornerstone of it? game pass what it was being talked about we will have mm -hmm. multiple new titles we will have a bunch of titles in a year we will get close to a release almost a month to a quarter mm -hmm. and what happens a complete wipe of the slate complete mm -hmm. change of plans the exact the hi-fi rush should be the gold standard for what you wanted game pass to be you all said you the wanted this. The double A quick releases, smaller titles to get out faster for a streaming service. And that is completely <laughs> what you wanted and of your own emission. And you close the studio that was making the game. You didn't even plan mm -hmm. for them to do that. There were You just happened to have a perfect example when you had bought them. This is... <sighs> baffling to me in that specific when you view a point from that specific angle and i think that proves that plans changed activision completely changed everything they have bought that they're going to be like we are making way fewer projects we are making hits we are guaranteeing hits and that's how we'll go forward i do not know how they're going to fund Sorry, not fun. Fill Game Pass now. If that is the plan, if they really do shred Third party deals, they still have a lot of money. studios. Yeah, but see, but if you and but if you look at that revenue, third party deals don't make sense. Sarah Bond and the leaked uh, emails theorizing a lot of these games and how much it would cost to get their uh, on their service. We're talking re their whole revenue, not their profit, their revenue for month mm -hmm. to month. Some of them costing three months to two months mm -hmm. of revenue it's un unsustainable so what 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 do they do i guess they get this giant hydra conglomerate to then fuel it yourself through all your own dealings and then now since you can't sell games we open up the separate avenue of playstation try to generate revenue from playstation we're already on pc so we can't do anything there but i i don't know that this i felt like that was a salient point you just said and that's something that has been racking my mind ever since they and the moment they announced tango was closed i was like that's is that not what you wanted 
So clearly exactly something is completely changed. Um, and I think that's obvious. I mean, we see that with um, the Activision Blizzard purchase. We see uh, the the big three inside of Xbox on the call where it's like, we're going to start releasing games on other platforms. And Emmett, I don't know if this caught you off surprise. When I heard that, I was like, oh, so it'll probably be like one a quarter probably this year. No, they're already all out. Yeah, they're already all out. That means Wait, see if this is out. Yes, it launched in Shit. early access, I want to say, if you bought like a special edition. And then I think That's now cool. it's out for everyone. Um, mm. I, 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 I want to I want to add that means that there's way more coming. I mean, you don't do Absolutely. that. You don't do that. And in two months, have all these games out and then just you know, the, our test is done. No, get ready. We're talking Gears collection. Gears co- yeah, nothing sacred. I'm platinum in Gears of War five. I will too for the meme. PlayStation. I will. I will too. I will because I love that fucking game. Um, holy shit. Okay, so that's that's interesting to think about the fact that hey, if this is crumbling everything, then certain things might be accelerating that they already were. But the thing I just stood on is like, look, I know Microsoft is Microsoft. You, you have your Surface stuff, you have Windows, you have Microsoft Office, you have all these different avenues to get money. The thing I'm confused on is like, where are you bleeding money for this to be necessary? Game Pass. They can't sell games and they can't release games because, frankly, they are not well run. I don't know how how many times have I had you on this show, Emmett? And I've said, how, how do half of these money? people still have jobs? How is Matt Booty walking around comparing peanut butter to bread? How is he still here? I don't I don't understand. How do you how? What more do we need to get new people in here? Clearly it's not working. And uh you know, I'll theorize maybe Phil needs to go too. Maybe he's the problem as well, although I he might be the only reason it's still alive with Game Pass. I mean, I who knows, but he might be the only reason that Microsoft didn't kill this way before now. I feel like Phil has been able to get by because like you said Xbox was just the little weirdos in the corner of the Microsoft building yep. and they no would always really be like at the end hard. of the earnings call no one would give two shits about them. They were exactly. they were, they'll ask about you know like if people care about AI you know word and mm-hmm. all that shit and then they'll be like it's Xbox like, is yeah. XYZ and they'd be like oh, yeah the fuck. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's it's kind of like when the littlest kid gets arrested mm-hmm. and not a little kid that no one really paid attention to wasn't just on the corner quiet fuck now we all got to worry about him. Now we all got to go to the jailhouse. Now we all got to look at you really hard and scrutinize you really hard because now you're affecting the family, yeah. not just you. Um, so I, I feel like Phil Spencer has been able to get by on that. And then also, I'll be honest, Phil has been dealt a raw hand in some of these instances where mm. games have gotten more expensive to make. So if you want to make a game on the level of you know, PlayStation's doing, you're going to need seven years and $200 million. And I think that's uh, something that million probably 300 million at this point, probably with the whole 4k ray tracing, whatever. Yeah. So like, you know, that's something that I think Phil didn't quite understand fully at the beginning of those seven years where the last of us and Spider-Man were starting to be made. I don't think he understood that. I think he was looking for, all right, what's, what's good in five years What's good in four years What's good in three years. And that's how you get, you know, your avouds, your pentiments, your hi-fi rushes, which are great, but they're not always looked at in the same light as a Last of Us, Spider-Man, etc. So, you know, he's been dealt a raw hand there a little bit, but I also think some of it is his own, well, is his own doing. Like Redfall, you should have been reviewing things, looking at that, and seeing the lack of passion on everyone's you, face. How did you let that release? It. That's what I'm saying. I like, would have you rather know taken the hit that. and canceled. Uh, there's exactly. no way they made money off of it. So what's the fucking that? What? Let's. I mean, it it may it might have sold. I mean, we, it might be as low as like ten thousand copies or something. I mean, uh, it it's. I ain't gonna say ten thousand, but probably like one thousand or one hundred thousand. That's it. Uh, even that. Let's say. Let's say that. And that's you not made, shit for a you game made that six, You made six million dollars. You pissed that away. So it's it's. There's no point. You mm-hmm. make more than that in just life subscriptions in a day so who cares <laughs> so like like exactly. I, I don't I, I why would you even get to the point where th- something like that is being released let alone mm-hmm. 
you thought it was gonna go. I don't. I don't know. I, that puzzles me. I don't understand. I don't understand. Nintendo would never do that. PlayStation would never do that either. So wh- wh- mm-hmm. why would you? I mean, it wasn't. It it was pretty broken. So yeah, it's not like you didn't know. So I don't know. I, I feel like you should have been pressed on that more too, because you clearly you knew mm-hmm. it was bad, and you just were like, oh, release it, and and um, not, you know, it might have been a lie then, or it might not have been. We don't we don't know what he knew, but you know, he was like, release it and move on to something else or try and fix it he probably did um and now they're gone and uh i didn't uh put it in the article i probably should have but uh just as a little bit of redfall obviously will be ending all development uh no more updates and if you bought dlc apparently there'll be a make good offer don't know what that I heard means it was refunds i heard it was full-on refunds. oh okay oh okay all right well that's fine i i, I was like why didn't you why didn't they just say refunds mm-hmm. but but what sucks worse about that is now that both those studios are closed they were going to, along with releasing that hero update DLC, they were going to put something in the game to make it run offline. And that would have been great for the longevity of that game. And yes, the game's not great, but it deserves to be preserved. Every game deserves to be preserved. Now, as soon as Microsoft decide, or as soon as that studio closes, let's be real, that game's not playable anymore. Yeah. All those years of work, even if they didn't love the game, eradicated. Mm-hmm. Same thing for Hi-Fi Rush. Once those music licenses expire... And they haven't been able to patch in that streamer mode yet with license free tracks. That game's done mm-hmm. off the stores. Nothing in it. They, it's no longer just a patch, and now it's just a streamer mode. There's nothing in that game now. And no one buys and it. Will, it has an expiration date because of the Game Pass. So you yeah, know, it, it, it might be gone uh, from the service, and it's gone. It's just straight up gone now. Yeah, I mean, we we talked a little bit about this on Welcome to the Thing as well, and this whole thing has gotten me. Because, of course, there's plenty of people that were in protest being like, hey, delete your Game Pass, cancel your Game Pass subscription, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel that. But on one hand, Game Pass and by extension, PlayStation Plus and whatnot are the only ways I'm able to play big new releases at launch. Like I try to keep up with this, you know, enthusiast hobby and write for the industry and keep up with the news and whatnot. But the only way I can keep up and play anything new with my current budget and whatnot is through these subscription services. So they provide a great service for me, but at the same time, I don't think it's sustainable to, you know, the only way I'm playing these big AAA games is through game pass. The only way I'm experiencing these little indies is through game pass, et cetera, et cetera. I think there needs to be some type of reckoning. I think, Mm. I honestly think I was really critical of PlayStation when they announced, you know, PlayStation plus is here and we're not doing day and date like game pass. We're not, you won't get God of War Ragnarok immediately. You won't get, you know, last of us part two immediately. I'm starting to think now, maybe that's the right way to go about it because now you get your $500 million immediately when you sell 20 million, 20 million copies or whatever on the first week or whatever. You get that money up front and you let it sell for quite a while. Maybe you release some DLC. Once that DLC hits, put it on the subscription service. That's exactly what they did with Horizon Forbidden West. The the Frozen Wilds, or not Frozen Wilds, our Burning Shores DLC came out. It was on PlayStation Plus right at the exact same time. So you didn't have to buy the base game, but you could pay your little 15 and get that game in there. And then if it ever leaves the service, but you still want to play it again, at this point, it's 10 bucks. At this point, it's 20 bucks. Why not just pay it? And now you got both. I like that method a lot more than just, hey, Halo Infinite's out right now. Play it in two weekends and that's it. And, you know, if you want to play it again, it'll always be on that service. But you got to say subscribe to that service. You want to play it in two years? Well, the time it took you to hold on to that service for those two years, you could have bought the game for a heavy discount. So I don't know. It's just... I'm starting to consider that maybe Game Pass isn't the best value in gaming because now we're really starting to see what the cost is Mm. to keep that going and the cost for us, the consumers, especially me as somebody who's really been getting into the Steam ecosystem. uh, I'm getting so many discounts on Fanatical, Humble Bundle, all these places. I could just wait a little bit and play these games for cheaper. Why do I have to sign up for the full 18 bucks a month or whatever it is on PlayStation and get these games that way? Maybe it's better to just piecemeal things and play some of the backlog instead of trying to keep up with the hottest new thing all the time. Maybe that's the best alternative, but it's kind of hard to say that when I'm Mr. 
talking head on every other podcast and trying to keep up with stuff. Like it's kind of hard to say that, but economically that might be the best option and maybe not morally, but it just might be the best thing for the industry right now, as far as the consumer side. Hold that thought. Okay. Um, with specifically talking about game passes, I was saying, well, I actually made him, what was it? A video? A, mm, is it a year ago now? Maybe, maybe a little bit pretty mm-hmm. much asking that exact question. And it looks like it's being answered. At least what they thought Game Pass was going to be, it wasn't. Um, I think they had a vision for it. It probably didn't work out with... Not probably, sorry. We know it's not working out because we saw the FTC's, FTC leak with they wanted X subscribers by X date. They're nowhere close to what they want, right? So mm-hmm. maybe this is a pivot to try and keep that going. But again, let's let's not forget that they... They just spent six nine billion dollars on something that probably wasn't making them money. Uh, if you were uh, this went uh, not viral, but I guess viral in our community. I'm sure you saw it. It was um, if you take out the the earnings call, if you take out Activision from their most recent earnings call, they're down year over year uh, in every yeah. metric. So maybe this was a survivability buy or something along the lines of like, hey, we buy this or we're in like mega trouble. Uh, so maybe we'll in game in Call of Duty. Maybe we'll f- fund us for I don't know so whatever short-sighted. whatever so vi- whatever short-sighted. vision they have. I I don't know, but it is it's very troubling when you when it's it's been nothing but bad for a while. It's not like this just happened and we're like whoa. No, it's this with the other closures with them just spending that much money for pretty much no new games right now like we have nothing that we can put we still don't have nothing to point to i would say since gear six that we can really point to and be like this is what is really good about playing on xbox right now uh you have to or be- gears five gears five for a second there, i was like oh uh, shit sorry <laughs> i did say gear six i was like no i Gear six. I was literally about to be like, no, gear six. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, gears five. Uh, We'd have to go back to gears awesome. five to really be like, look, this is a really good example of, of why you should be playing on Xbox. So now it's like you you get it for Game Pass because it's like pre- I mean it's pretty nice because of all the games you're getting, but uh to 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 bring up what you said, like we're seeing what happens when you do that. They have to wipe the slate they have to focus on fewer projects not only in other places we're seeing that but but now as we see xbox as they're kind of managing this monster of a m- amalgamation of of studios at this point i don't even know how many studios how you, they have no th- like how you even manage all this i think they have <sighs> jesus i don't even That's, know you 40 don't. plus or something like that now right, something, you don't. something like that but uh not 40 what it, what it be? it's probably like 35 I mean, I, at this lot, point, but... the, the rumor is, or maybe not the rumor, but the talk of the town is, or according to the Jason Schreier article, since they're still doing cuts, what they're looking at next is the core, excuse me, is the core Microsoft Game Studios team. And because they're thinking so short-sightedly, because they're looking at games that were popping off literally last year, immediately turning around and killing those studios, it is strictly a what have you done for me lately. Yeah. So like is 343 in trouble which i mean would they be fair already considering got, everything they got cut so i imagine they're fine because they mm. have they had a culling not recently but with that 1900 i know a lot of them were cut um and they had a whole restructuring mm. of their leadership when uh, I, uh i don't know if that's enough for them it, it might not be i mean halo infinite's in a good spot now but are they i don't even know how they make it money i have no idea i mean i'm sure it's fine but is it? Here's the thing. At this point, I think purely I'm, off the game, you can't touch three four three. I don't. I, just with pure. Because once you do, then Halo's dead, and that's all people are gonna say. And that's that's the headline. Halo dead. Three four three is oh, three four three. Just pure off the game. I think that's the same reason Bioware isn't closed now. Frankly, because mm. EA just they can't have, they can't they can't be the 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 company that killed Bioware. So like they they have to just yeah. and. and you know, that could be wrong, but that's how I feel. Anyway, it's like they can't they can't be that company. EA's already viewed as some, one of the worst studio. Uh, sorry, like in entertainment industries um, get in line at this point in the games industry. But yeah, w- when we're talking specifically about games, when we're talking specifically about all this and what we're looking at, it's 
I mean, tr it's troubling. Like, if you're really if if you have a, an Xbox right now, like, what are you what are you looking forward to? Hellblade? They haven't even shown you what the game is. Uh, it's obvious that they're not showing you the combat because it's not good. It's the it's the original Hellblade one combat. So what's next? Fabled? I heard that's uh, or I've read a lot um, that that game's in massive trouble. Apparently it's been better. Yeah, yeah. Apparently it's gotten better. Uh, the the, the that's why it's seemingly taken so long. But um, yeah. apparently it's gotten a lot better. But at the beginning, that game was real bad in a real bad spot. And apparently it's well, Perfect Dark. Is yeah, that gonna be? Perfect are they, Dark is rough. Are they done? I, I, they don't even have a a studio working on that. They're they're hiring Crystal Dynamics team to try and help them fund this, which is crazy because you game. have so many studios in the fucking first place. Use them. They can't. Why they, are you spending money on a, a outsourcing? It's because initiative was new, and I don't think they could attract talent. Because if you want to make game, like compelling games, why would you go to Xbox? If if I remember right, initiative mm. is in California. Which is such an expensive place to go. I think they did that to be like, hey, all these other studios that are also here yes. is right nearby. Uh, you don't have to drive too far, et cetera, et cetera. It was probably to but try and get is, um, people mm -hmm. from, uh, it's Santa Monica. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. God damn. Santa so, Monica, try to get Santa Monica Studio. Trying to get, I mean, everyone around there. That's the, that's the spot, you know, to try and get everyone. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. that's probably to try and bleed people. If I remember right, someone from Insomniac left, went to the initiative, and then came left back. The initiative. <laughs> And took a demotion. So, Ugh. I mean, we're talking about a studio that's probably on fire. Just, yeah. And it hasn't what even the released fuck? the game yet. So I wouldn't be shocked if if they're just gone and they cancel Perfect Dark. Because, first off, who the fuck wants a Perfect Dark game? Second. A Perfect Dark game could be cool. It, it could. Uh, okay. Yeah, I agree. I think anything could be cool. But I, I, I understand what you mean. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> but, fair, fair. Um, but, like, what now? I don't know. What now? If they're looking at continuing cut costs... And they already aren't making that many compelling games. What's next? I mean, what is next? I don't I don't know. Here's what I'm looking at, because I'm looking at the whole slate. I pulled up the list of uh, subsidiaries and studios all owned by Microsoft. I don't know what they do. I don't know who they take out. If they're looking at Xbox Game Studios specifically, this is not... I will never in my life say, here's who I want. Of course. But what I'm fearing... Who do expect... I am fearing Rare because, yes, that will be a hard blow for nostalgia. No, nah, but Sea of Thieves is the only successful. I'm not saying they title. shut down Rare. I'm saying they give it 343 style cuts oh, and then oh, Everwild oh. is done. Jesus, that's, that's what I I'm forgot all about fearing. Everwild. I got to be honest. Yeah, oh my see, God. most people have, which Jesus is why I think. Christ. Exactly. So I think they're in trouble. I think there's a chance that, um, what is it? between oh between playground and turn 10 one of those i feel like they're gonna say hey we got enough forza we can do one forza style we can do like the open world forza of playground games people like that one more anyway so you can't fucking then playground because that's turn 10. fable but i mean i guess they i mean i guess i don't know that who... i'm saying they get rid of turn 10 i oh, think shit. that's if if they yeah. think oh we got enough forza that's where they cut because right. more people like love the open world fun one rather than the sim Right. I, that's what I'm worried about. Um, I couldn't even tell you what World's Edge is working on. Um, oh, they do like Forgotten Empires and like Age of Empires. Age of I Empires Age is of Empires. what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could see Age of Empires. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it'll be a little bit from everybody. PlayStation pretty much did that, but they didn't really. It didn't seem like, anyways, they singled anyone out other than their closure of Sony London. Um, yeah, they they said it was, was between uh, Media Molecule and uh, London Studio. Yeah, yeah, and that was. I mean, I'm not. I, I'm not saying like it, they deserved it. I'm just saying like that was like 12 people. So I mean, like we're not talking like hundreds. You know, that was a, a small thing, especially well, compared the, to when you when you compare it to this. Well, the way they're talking and the way they're cutting, it's like it feels like big shit is what they need. They need big cuts they need, out of these. Companies. They need big cuts and big returns. And I'm imagining they're looking at the next Call of Duty to, to, to show that off. Obviously, with the showcase announcement coming, I think it was June 7th, their Call Early. of Duty teaser. I mean, they're probably going to be hard behind. And you can expect that showcase will have some sort of Activision titles coming to Game Pass. And maybe they're expecting a huge influx of subscribers because they're adding all the Crash Bandicoots and the Transformers. There's a bunch of little games. If you, I don't know if you saw this. Um, I, yeah. I, I, I chill. I like the Reddit uh, gaming leaks and rumors. It's really, it, I love. And someone caught that 
the Ultimate Alliance games have been re-added to the store, not like to buy, but their listing was updated, meaning that they could be ready to like, or at least getting ready to do a fat drop of here's the Activision game drop for this year. It's like 12, 20. I mean, they could do 50 titles at once if they really wanted to, but I imagine they'll cut it up. And they put they They'll probably and, do it throughout a month, a single month of yeah. just drop, drop, drop. But yeah, it. I if I may go back to this, I think Activision completely wrecked wrecks them. They're being looked at much closely. I'm sure Satya is asking Phil lots of hard questions. I would I I and again as a reminder, we have not heard or seen a high executive over at Xbox really be let go or fired. And they yeah. haven't been really making anything of substance in 10 years, unless you discount Game Pass. I would say Sea of Thieves, Gears 5, those are some examples. Hi-Fi Rush, that they're gone, and they had nothing to do with that anyways. But uh, those are some examples that I would bring up. But I don't know. They, they could be completely axing a lot of these and be like, look, here's our compelling IP. We have Doom. We have Elder Scrolls. We have Fallout. We have Halo. Mm -hmm. These are our titles, and we're working on them. We're not making... Uh, uh, it's not no rest for the wicked. Um, oh, south of midnight. South of midnight. Yeah, we're not making south yep. of midnights anymore. We're making your your support studio for the next Halo game or something. We could be looking at something like that where we're seeing an Activisionified Xbox or something of that nature. To where See, hey, that's... hey, no deep cuts, only hits. You know, like like in music, like hey, no, we're hit, we're doing and that's hits literally, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. That I mean, that's literally the opposite of what everyone was wanting. Everyone thought, exactly. "Oh, Activision is getting bought by Microsoft." I thought that was Microsoft. silly as fuck. I gotta be honest. All these people Look, being like, "I'll agree." They might bring back Spyro and these things. I'm like, "That's a maybe," but people got very obscure, and I was like, "They're I not will, doing this." Mm, they won't I will call agree Duty. absolutely that yes, they bought Activision because they want Call of Duty, but I also feel like, do they want? the same do they want call of duty accelerating at the exact same rate when you already have halo when you already have gears when you already have elder scrolls so. skyrim <laughs> all this shit because like how because like yes it makes sense that you want as much money as possible no matter what but like if you're releasing a bethesda mm -hmm. game do you want a call of duty competing with that at the same year mm -hmm. if you're releasing the next gears of war do you want to call it a Goody game competing with that the same year? Yeah, but in my opinion, especially you're if you're putting up, them on all platforms, I, 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 I would agree. But I feel like you're putting apples to origins in this comparison. I don't think Skyrim and Call of Duty, even if it launched on the same day, would really fuck with each other. Um, mm. That's an exaggeration. If if they release and that's Matt Booty's job, frankly, he should, if he's not syncing up these releases. I don't, I don't know how you have a job now. You definitely shouldn't have a job if you can't even sync <laughs> up your releases correctly and, and plan out a fiscal year. Um, but j j yeah, I but I do. I see what you're saying, but I don't know. Those aren't like games. I feel like they wouldn't care. I feel like they're they need a return. They, they've they're fucked for. They spent too much money. Let's on this let's one think about it now. Yeah. We're thinking about Xbox. They don't care about. They're not Game looking CEOs. at like, oh, micro let's let's count Microsoft's earning this month. I actually saw an Adam Boy's tweet, although I understand the spirit of what he's saying, and I agree with that spirit. He all he did was he tweeted out the quarter or earnings uh, for Microsoft, and they were up like some stupid number, like twenty percent, and they made mm -hmm. like twenty one billion dollars or something like that. Some some nonsense <laughs> number that sounds made up when you say it. And yeah, and I agree. I agree. In the context, yeah, why are, that's a, that's a bad look, but it's not like they're going to be like, hey, you know, Microsoft Word sold really well this year. Let's let's cut off some of that profit and put it on Xbox because that'll make them look better. You know, I, I like <laughs> I, that's I get it, but like they got to be self-sustaining. PlayStation doesn't have that luxury and they're doing way better than them. So I don't understand the point uh, without PlayStation. Sony might as well be gone. Uh, of course, they have mm -hmm. Sony Pictures, and that makes a lot of money too. But there are TVs and these things, you know, it's nothing in in when you compare it to PlayStation. So that's true. I, that's I, I would true. bring it up as as a counter argument, especially to to a specific argument that Adam Boyce. And again, I I agree with the spirit. It's optically it's horrible because you just made more money than eighty percent of people ever in existence all put together. 
in a single quarter in a single like four month period. So you cutting all these jobs and pretending like you don't have money is a bit silly, but I understand we're working with a conglomerate mm-hmm. of unimaginable size. I'm, yes, you're working on a conglomerate, but it's just felt like for the last couple months here. Yes, I understand the economy's rough and things are hard and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at a certain point, it comes down to if someone has to take a bullet, why is it always these people? Mm-hmm. Why is it always them having to suffer for the mistakes of leadership uh, or yes. for the effects yes. of the economic climate? It is always the people at the bottom. Thank you. Preach. It is never because you. we talked about, oh, yes, yeah, it's just not the U.S. custom to cut your salary to, you know, find cuts in other places so that you can keep people on. It's not custom to do that, but it fucking should. Mm-hmm. And I think times like this is where we see that and we realize that. And I think, you know, I understand indie studios are going through it as well. Things are very mm-hmm. difficult for indie studios, especially trying to find funding for projects. I know the uh, yeah, Deliver Us from Mars. and to, to get money Yeah, for exactly. Deliver Us from Mars developer just shut down because yep. of that. Um, so, like, you know, things are hard. But I really do think that what's been happening and is still happening in the media landscape where, you know, people are having difficulties at your IGNs or they're shutting down devices and et cetera, et cetera. Now let's go make our mini maps. Let's go make our kind of funnies. Let's go make our, you know, our side projects. I feel like those projects are what people are coming to. And the fans know, hey, this place is still solid. It's the same people from the last one. And they carry over. I think gamers are going to either understand that or just not put so much cachet into, oh, it's the new Naughty Dog game. Maybe Naughty Dog doesn't mean anything anymore, but Neil Druckmann's name does. So wherever he ends up, that's what's popping. Uh, same thing for Amy Henning. No one knows what Skydance is, but they nope. know Amy Henning. Mm-hmm. And so they'll compare that. Uh, same thing for a lot of these guys. And even if they don't know the name, Among Us popped off without a name. You know, Content Warning popped off without a name. Yep. Like, content warning is barely enough, a made game and it popped off. Exactly. Like, it's barely they, a game that works. It's a joke game, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, but it's pretty much it a meme up. that you play, but it, it completely exploded. Exactly. But, and Wild Divers, too. No one knew who the fuck Arrowhead was mm. uh, until everything blew up. So, the point I'm trying to make is like, fans will flock to a good game no matter where it's at. And I think we just need to have more faith that a good game doesn't need to come out of a corporation. It doesn't need to come from Microsoft. It doesn't even need to come from Nintendo, Sony, any of these big Activision EA, whatever. It doesn't have to come from them. It can come from anyone and we can flock to it there without feeling like, okay, it has to be, it, it, it's, we expect it from Game Pass. No, just expect it from everywhere. And I think that takes us, I think that takes us, the people who actually curate shit the people who make content about these things and people watch the content and want to know what we think that takes us being a little bit more critical and maybe searching a little bit deeper and saying hey maybe i don't have to just look at what's new on the xbox store what's going on on itch you know yeah <laughs> like what's going on in the in the dungeons of steam like not just the new thing that's at the top of the charts what's popping off in the doldrums like Crow County's coming out soon. I think the reviews are coming out for that right now. I didn't realize that was coming out today. I thought that had several more weeks, like next month. And I but, think I think we've kind mm-hmm. of almost full circled this in in saying like if if we had less games, more would probably rise to the top. And I think the amount of games mm-hmm. that are released, the amount of projects that are worked on, all of these things are probably contributing to an overall problem that is existing from situations that come from things like this. These giant company eats up and, and has to cut what? I don't know. They're probably up to like nearly people. Yeah, nearly like a tenth of their full full staff or something like that. And uh-huh. that one tenth is like two thousand plus people. So when when you bring something like that up and you compare it, and we probably are slowly realizing that there's just too many games and we gotta figure out what that means for the industry. The last time we had too many games and there and no one knew what to buy, it's the video game crash happened in like the eighties. Now, I'm not going to say that's happening. I'm just saying that is an example of what could happen if if a consumer doesn't know what to buy. I don't think that'll ever happen again because we have the internet and we know what the, you know what's good, but when we can pull together everything and we look how many games are being released, that might be one of the problems and mm-hmm. 
too many people might be in the May? industry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like May already has like 50 indie games coming out this month alone. Yeah. A lot of which I'm excited for, but like I'm only going to play, play them all. two of them. Yeah, you can't play them all. Exactly. Can't buy them all either. Exactly. And so it's it's rough. There's too many games because we've laid off too many people at once and they all split off into separate studios and they're making their own shit. And now there's 50,000 things to play at any given time, let alone, you know, the way that we talk about and idolize backlogs. We're always looking at the past as well. So now you got 50 games that just came out today and then 500 games that you still kind of want to play. And, then, and it's like, where's that time going? And it's important. And then to at know, the same time, 60 percent play old shit anyway. <laughs> it's an important. Ex- there you go. And it's important to note. I, I remember listening to kind of funny, I think, said this metric where it's like uh, uh, many of the games that were in the top charts came out years ago six mm-hmm. or more and when you and i was actually theorizing this on on my layoff episode of last week again thank you everyone for turning in tuning in that it, we have and sean Layden said this a long time ago we had a stagnant amount of people that didn't really grow we had about a hundred million gamers that are playing on consoles steam well you know whatever don't you don't you don't count uh, phone because it's a completely different beast <laughs> and now we're in a situation where we're finding ourselves that games are actually making that smaller intentionally so we're finding a situation where we had a stagnant uh group of people now we're losing them because other games are pulling them away you should only be madden nba call of duty now it's mm-hmm. madden nba call of duty fifa fortnite apex Destiny Overwatch. two, Overwatch two. Yeah. How I mean, how many more can we list? Like it's it's getting to a everyone, point. Everyone and where, everyone wants their permanent game. Yeah. And it, it, yeah. Everyone wants the permanent game. It's already too late, in my opinion. People should stop trying, unless you really think you got some gas. But it and should just be do. abandoned. And they all think they do. Yeah. Good point. Suicide Squad. They were probably like, we're bad. Mm. And then like when it took them seven <laughs> seven eight years, and they were like, this is horrible. Um. <laughs> But when we look at that hundred million again, Sean Layden, brilliant. God, he really was very smart, and it sucks that he uh, is of nowhere of note of note now. Um, but you had that stagnant number, and it's now even smaller, to a point where now you might have to go to maybe some sort of lowest common denominator to make sure you can sell. So now you have to look at. What's popping right now? Okay, well, Star Wars is big, so let's make a Star Wars game. Let's, you know, guaranteed mm-hmm. hits. Now we have even less of a of a um uh of a vibrant let's call ecosystem where we're getting new IPs, yep. we're getting new X, we're getting new Y. And now it's just like again, we might see Xbox turning to the Activision of uh themselves and being like, we're working on 20 titles and 18 of them or pre-existing two of them are new ips because you know you gotta experiment every now and then i i don't know but this i've been nothing but kind of worried about this ever since this happened yesterday ish yeah i've been very fucked up about it <laughs> yeah and it's and it's uh, troubling especially as a guy who's again I, I i'm an xbox guy like as a reminder i know i don't i don't i try not to say it all the time but i like my achievements i like playing on xbox i, I that's my place to play and jesus am i worried <laughs> Am I worried? I want a new. I want mm -hmm. Xbox to keep going. I like them. I don't want like this weird amalgamation of Xbox and you have Steam on it as well. And now it's like Mm -hmm. a PC, but you just plug it up to a TV. I I don't really want that, but might be the only option they have left, or it's that, or it's the close the (laughs) close the shit down. I think. I think what we do is rebuild the industry around experiences that end. Not necessarily something that Thank has you. an expiry date, so you Thank don't you. like can't play it anymore and stuff. Right. But like, make start making games that you can beat in a single weekend again, yep. and having those be the marquee releases. Mm, yes, like thank you. I, I remember shit, I, man. I'm sounding old, but I remember when I was getting my Christmas gifts as a little kid. I I played the Call of Duty Modern Warfare campaign in a single sitting. Yep, and then I played that multiplayer, and then the next one would come out, and I wouldn't touch that other game again. Now Warzone gets updated and warzone is going forever fortnite is going forever everything's going forever and if it's not going forever it's going for 200 hours in an open world constantly procedurally generated blah 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 
it's just we Beautiful. can't be playing the same things forever because once you do that, they won't buy the new thing because you can't have these people working on the same exact games in perpetuity. Many, Not everyone can do that. Some many people, people have their shit. forever game and they buy a game a month, oh, uh, a year, two games, three exactly. games, maybe a game a quarter. Now you're working exactly. with someone with very one limited time and limited interest. So now we are mm-hmm. working with the average consumer that is going to even less likely to buy your thing. So that it must be horrifying now. And let's not uh, forget that um, there's studies saying that console, the, the the generation coming up might not even buy consoles, which is why yeah. I think they're all like, we have to make handhelds. We have to try and get the iPad kids mm-hmm. in, in, in with X boy and, and a new Vita. Cause they're probably <laughs> worried that they're not going to buy a console now. And now they're like, what do we, mm-hmm. if we, if we don't have the, generation coming up to try and buy into this space how do we get them and, and maybe that's the entire reasoning on why they're trying to quickly i mean i can't believe playstation's making another handheld as long as the rumors are correct and then they look like they are um i hope they i can't are. i can't would be i can't exciting. believe it if that is true and they really do come out with a psp they should just name it a psp that'd be awesome well it would be great if they just psp toed it i think it's wild that not only are they making a new one if the rumors are true but also that I realistically I might not even buy one. The yeah, because you have a Steam Deck, my and that's another reason. Yeah, the, there you, and there you go. There's another thing. It's another, another this, little cut. Cut mm-hmm, from PC uh, ecosystem has just opened itself up so wide to where it's like if you have access to that lower barrier of entry now, who cares about? Oh, I can play Uncharted: Golden Abyss again on this new device. I don't. Get, I can emulate that on the current device I have now. And now we well, have probably gone not that to game, the still, you know divestification of these they're, they're like we they have in um Hiroki Totoki said this um mm-hmm. he was like we're looking at new ways of making money we might be launching on PC earlier and they saw Helldivers 2 and probably like fuck we gotta start doing, doing they probably they're probably like oh we might be doing this much more because they probably have mm-hmm. internal data that says this percent of people might have bought it on a PlayStation and it might be as low as 10%. I mean, like I know people who have both PlayStation and PC. That's usually the the second system they have, but like, do they really lose that many sales? I don't know. But mm-hmm. if anything, held I received was a much bigger success than anything. Is the next God of war day and date? Probably not. But I mean, I, it's not as crazy because it like, so looks much money being day and date. And you're going to get a big game, probably like Sony Ben's next game, something like mid tier like yeah. that before you get a full on God one of more, War. Yeah. One more test probably is smart. And maybe they might never do it with things they see as marquee. Xbox is in a whole different realm. They need any money they can. So everything's already day and day on PC. Who now now we need it? to now we need to talk about if Xbox were ever released on other Switch and PlayStations really close to release. That's probably the situation that they'll be in now. And I imagine the answer is yes, uh, because they might be like, Hey, and I, I would rather just do it now and rip the bandaid off. But I, I want them to come out and be like, Hey, Xbox game studios are exclusive. Anything else fair game. We might keep a game for six months and then it goes to PlayStation. Not in this gray area. We are now where it's like, will the next halo come to PlayStation? probably not but that but there's the pause where it's like i don't think so and that's just enough to i mean why would someone buy an xbox now when they they might be able to get it on a playstation later who knows it's very well this whole entire situation very strange i i've talked about that that part specifically as well i think once everything's available everywhere then it becomes what console is better what hardware is better xbox has proven itself to be the better console and they can win on that front I don't think Sony is ever going to put their shit on an Xbox. No. I don't think definitely not Nintendo, of course, but like, you know, if you can buy everything on PlayStation, you're going to buy PlayStation. And I don't think Sony is going to budge as far as like getting things on Xbox specifically. They'll put yeah. it on PC, they'll put it on the Steam store, then we'll touch the Microsoft store. And let's not forget Satya is on record multiple times now saying, well, one, he said, um, Worse, you know, he he likes services. He he want he Microsoft mm-hmm. is a service company. He doesn't give a shit about the the heart the software being exclusive. He wants you to come to him because you like a service. You like Game Pass. You like achievements. You like profiles, whatever. Exactly. I don't know why they haven't doubled down on their services. They, they're really Game Pass has been the only 
honestly like vector that that seems like to get any improvement because it damn sure ain't the games and <laughs> satya also pointed out that like he loves that playstation's top 20 best-selling games like 15 of them or or not 15 it was like nine of them are xbox titles like that's a specific mm-hmm. thing he said in an earnings call so that means more 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 open the floodgates like it's gears collection coming 2025 Halo collect hey, Master Chief collection. I, I feel like you're gonna I'm get a lot of the collections and then the next entries. I'm waiting for the announcement mm-hmm. that Master Chief, and that means it's over. Which they start with Sunset Overdrive. I like what I, I like think where that's you're at. it. I like where you're at. I think they start with that, be like, oh, we're we're bridging the gap, uh, it, it, Insomniac, etc. Blah blah blah, and then before you know it, fucking Viva Pinata collection. <laughs> <laughs> Viva Pinata. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, it's so much. It's gonna pop off. So so interesting. Anyways, to round it off, very sad. Tango's gone. I really do hope mm. something positive comes from all of this because it seems like nothing negative. And again, it seems like it's over for the Talking Heads. I want to. I want to quickly bring up this before we kind of get out of here. Do you think Xbox gets a little more quiet now? I mean, Phil's. I, not seen as public enemy number one. He's he's definitely no Drake, but he's not seen <laughs> as someone that seems as welcomed as he was prior, at least. So I wonder if they'll stop being so buddy buddy. Well, I always thought that was weird that they did that to begin with. I see them taking pictures with people and shit. So it's weird. But anyways, yeah. uh, what, what do you think? Um, I think that Phil is I think Phil's been on Twitter this last two days. I think he's seen the reactions. He's seen the vitriol. He's seen the specific calls for him to do more than just get up here and be humble. Um, I think because of that, they move differently until they can do that same act alongside 50 games coming to Game Pass. Here's a new Call of Duty in June. I think that's what they do. I think they shut the fuck up this whole month. I think so. They come to you in June. They blow you away with some probably going to be really great at out we're here to You're surprise get... and delight you oh i th- i'll, I'll mm-hmm. be i'll be straight i think the showcase is gonna be awesome frankly i think ha- i think 70 percent of everyone who's bitching right now is gonna forget that's just how it always happens unfortunately no one has any mm-hmm. sort of uh, <laughs> any sort of like remembrance or like backbone when it comes to any of this so so i agree it, it's once showcase happens it, it, it's going down it's just um I forgot my other point too, but yeah, talking heads. Yeah, probably. I think uh, they will kind of tune down. I interrupted you. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that that showcase is probably going to be wild. Of course, Call of Duty is coming out, but you're going to get first looks at some new games. You're going to get gameplay for stuff like Cockwork Revolution. And God, I thought you uh, said Cockwork. I was like, the Cockwork fuck? Revolution. That's, that's, that's what great. I was like, whoa. That's for, <laughs> that you, you'll get that. Don't worry. Oh, Lord. I hope not from Drake. Good Lord. I wouldn't survive <laughs> it. Um, anywho. Um, yeah, I think you're going to get a lot of that stuff. And I think Microsoft is going to play that nostalgia card. I think they're going to, you, you said Ultimate Alliance. I think they're going to get really deep oh, into yeah. the weeds when it comes to not just the Activision Blizzard back catalog, but also like now that you have access to them, what things were held up that we couldn't have done backwards compatibility wise. I think, you know, <laughs> ooh, excuse me. Wow, that was a weird one. Um, I think Singularity might come back. I think Prototype. The originals might come back. These um and just in case someone's like Deadpool the video game. Just just oh my god. Horrible game. Um it just in fun. case it was it was it was fine. Uh way too short. <laughs> what do they do with yeah. all that time? Anyways, um, and if people think he's crazy, you know, a lot of these games, all it takes is a, is a title renewal, is a is some sort of small little fee to renew some sort of thing, and you got it right back. You know, I don't think that's crazy. I, I don't think I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that June hits and they're like right now, 20 games are on Game Pass if we just added from the Activision Blizzard purchase. Ten of them are fucking called to some mm-hmm. garbage. <laughs> like, like maybe not it, ten of them, but like, you know, I bet they'll have something obscure like that one Spyro the Dragon game with Wayne Brady in it. Like shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> like the one that was a God of War clone. Yeah, 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 that yeah, yeah. I forget what that one's called. Um was that I, a I DS or something like that? I don't know. It was on everything, yeah, including Xbox. But yeah. the Xbox version was the God of War clone. Mm-hmm. Oh boy! But yeah, it's we're in for a wild ride because understanding that, hey, Xbox stuff aside, this entire industry is going to look substantially different than it did at the start of the pandemic. Yep, I think the pandemic was a surge, and everyone's like, "Oh fuck, money's everywhere," and then the pandemic lessened, and 
people realize, oh, wait, this money isn't endless and did not spend accordingly beforehand. And now we're dealing with the repercussions of that. I'm actually kind of pissed off that it's like this and it has to be this way because it's not only affecting the games industry, it's the press side too. A lot of shit's getting fucked up in the press side. Part of it feels like, hey, this is a consequence of the big wealth transfer that happened during that time period. And now companies and corporations have so much more power. We have a lot less power because we haven't been organizing and getting together to stand as a single unit rather than a million individual things you could shut off. Um, It's it's a lot of shit that's going to happen. I'm very scared and very nervous about it. There are some things to look forward to, but I am full of way more dread than than. I don't know, hope for the future when it comes to the games industry specifically. Yeah, um, I, I don't know what I'll title yeah. this, but last week was um, Gaming Layoffs, Gaming's Uncertain Future. And, I mean, it seems even more uncertain now with so many cuts. So so many, it seems like it's much, much, much less risky. Like, they, they want, or I should say, more risky to invest in new ideas or really anything new, and they just want to focus... On things that they're confident in, and that means less games, which might be better in the long run, but that that might be less creative, which is always, I mean, that's going to be the first thing that goes. It's not the money, it's the creativity. Indeed, yeah. (sighs) It's always creative voices that get snuffed out, and this is going to lead a lot of people to just leave the industry entirely. So all that talent gone, and then when you want to make a new game, you got to foster that talent all up again and teach them how to do shit that they are not trained to do. I would be and, curious to see if there's a study on like how many people did we lose? You know what I mean? Like, of course, layoffs happen. They're horrible. How many people were able to get a job in the games industry again? And how many people? Because obviously there's a certain percent that won't. Right. Mm-hmm. That either can't through either skill or just availability. And how many like change careers? I, I just I'm curious if, if there's like a number where it's like, yeah, we lost 20 percent of all people that were laid off in this time frame. It would be it would be impossible to like guess, but that'd be interesting to know. Yeah. I'd be interested to know that too. It's uh it's fucked up. Uh I, I feel like we've said different variants of that phrase already, but I don't know what else to say. The world is changing violently before our very eyes and there's only so much it feels like each of us can do. But perhaps to all, all together we can do something, but that takes a lot. That takes a lot from all of us if mm. all of us act. Agreed. I think that's a good good place to end this conversation and move on to date updates. This is your monthly games for May for PlayStation Plus. Now remember this is essential games. So you have you if as long as you're on the lowest tier of PlayStation Plus, you'll get these games to add to your library. PS5 and PS4, Football Club 2024. I heard that's a pretty good game. People mm-hmm. are liking that. Of course, that's FIFA, but without the name anymore. Yeah. And then another PS5 title that's Ghost Runner 2. Another PS4, PS5 title that's in Tunic. Everyone, please mm. try this game out. Beautiful okay. game. Loved my time with Tunic. Um, is clearly trying to, I mean, just looking at the picture, is clearly trying to be a Zelda retro game. It utilizes very unique ways of playing. I think it is a fantastic game. I'm fucking the best it. Zelda like I think probably ever made Metrovania, whatever you want to call that kind of hybrid esque game that they tried. I loved, 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 loved it. The specifically the the part of the game where it's the way you learn the game is through ext- an instruction manual that you find while playing the game. And that is such a unique way of, of, of having like the tutorial in these papers. Also, there's lore in the pages. too. It's so good. It's, it's so, so good. deep. Highly recommend it. Next up, Lightfall for Destiny 2. So this is the, the newest expansion. This is going to be available, of course, for PS4 and PS5 members because, of of course, Destiny 2 is a PS4 and PS5 game. So if you download this, as long as you're a Plus member, you'll have access to Lightfall. And as a reminder, that means if you have Plus technically for this month, you will have access to every expansion that is in the game for Destiny 2 if you get this as well for no additional cost other than, of course, your yes. PlayStation Plus membership. Because the other ones have been made free uh, f- until the new expansion releases June 4th or something like that. Oh, wow. So hmm. enjoy plenty of time to play through all of that. Plenty of time. Excellent. So enjoy. Next up, 
Lords of the Fallen and Sniper Ghost Warriors Contracts 2 are going to be coming to Game Pass. That This was a little thing that was kind of announced in like a little earnings call uh, from the mm-hmm. publisher, so get excited for that. And I'm, I'm excited for Lords of the Fallen. looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I haven't played it yet, um, but you wanted yeah. to add something, I remember. Yes, I do want to add something um, for the PC gamers out there, since we talked about, oh, maybe the vest from consoles. Um, Humble Bundle is going fucking crazy. Um, let me tell you what the Humble Bundle is today. Uh, so we got three different bundles. Uh, main thing is Humble Choice. Humble Choice is, of course, their monthly subscription. 12 bucks gets you eight games. Sometimes it's one more. Maybe it's a coupon thrown in there. This month is really good. You got Yakuza Like a Dragon. Hi-Fi Rush. Steel Rising. Jesus. Loodle Knot. Loodle Knot is really good. So shout out to Loodle Knot. Um, and then a couple of other indies, King of the Castle, Bravery and Greed, Amanda and the Adventurer, which is from Dread X, some really good horror game makers, and Mediterranea Inferno. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a lot of great games this month. It's very exciting. I've already put my money down and claimed all the games I want on here. Um, so if you got a PC, if you got a Steam Deck, I'm pretty sure all of these games are playable at the very least. Absolutely worth it. So I wanted to shout out the Humble Choice games, and there's, of course, coupons for Yakuza Like a Dragon, some meta-publishing games, and Saturnalia. Really good deal there, but then also, regular-ass Humble Bundles, they just announced a Metroidvania Humble Bundle. For $14, you can get Nine Years of Shadows, Axiom Verge 1 and 2, Cookie Cutter, Ghost Song, Death's Gambit Afterlife, and The Night Witch. Um which is a crazy bundle for 14 bucks. That is really, really good. If you've never played any of those games, a lot of those are solid. Ghost Song is solid from what I've played of it. And I've been interested in the rest of these. So I'm definitely picking that one up. And the last one, Bungeon Crawlers, which is a lot of dungeon crawler type games. Um, I'll be honest, there's only three of these that I'm familiar with, but I can vouch for them. Um, we got Avalon, formerly Summoner's Fate. Uh, we got Myth Force, which is that first person Saturday morning cartoony type of co-op action game lunacid which is very it's a kingsfield like so if you've if you thought kingsfield was cool back in the day before from software's making dark souls lunacid is one to look at that picture um, for lunacid looks sick oh my god dude that you gotta see art? the art the oh art is very god. playstation one inspired it's fucking cool um we also got Seralium ultimate devil spire uh hell slave and one that I've actually played here, Going Under, uh, which is, you know, Agro Crab, the same people who made Another Crab's Treasure. Going Under was their first title. Um, so a lot of good games in this bundle. The Fungin Crawlers bundle is uh, $15 for everything. So if you got a PC, this is what I'm talking about. Games go really cheap, really quickly. Um, it, all of these are great bundles. And just Humble Choice alone is fucking insane. Like Yakuza, Hi-Fi Rush, and Steel Rising, and Little Knot alone are way are worth twice the cost of 12 bucks. So mm. absolutely help on that. Thank you for shouting that out. I, I rarely visit Humble, but it's always, always a great place to be. I mean, it is insane. I've picked up Humbles usually when it's like really like thrown out there because like I really, I love the like crazy. crazy charity ones. And they're like, hey, you know, all your money goes to X relief. And I'm like, oh, cool. I, I, I love doing the little Humbles that are like insane. And, and it also goes to a good cause too. So uh, and I don't even play on PC. I just like doing it uh, just for mm-hmm. just for just to say I did it. Um, and I get to I feel you, I feel brag you. about uh, giving to charity on the show. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> look how good I am. Yeah, look how virtuous I am. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Again, thank you so much, Emmett, for taking the time. You're like one of the only people that's actually given something to the show before. <laughs> so it's just my shit. I <laughs> Anytime. I'm happy to. I'm happy to. Emmett Watkins Jr., I want to ask you one singular question. Of course, I'm going to ask everyone at home this exact question as well. What's queued up for the week? That could be a game, a TV show, a movie, a podcast, a comic book, a book, anything. What do you have queued up for the week? Now, if you want to answer that question, remember, comments below. I answer every single one. And you can, of course, tweet at me at EVM1000. I will get in touch with you, and we can talk about what you have queued up for the weekend. And now, Emmett, tell me. All right, here's what I got queued up. Um, I got a fucking vacation I'm leaving for in like three days. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so, it's going to be different for you. You probably don't have much queued yeah, up, right? Absolutely. Not much queued up. I do have, I'm watching Fallout. Part of me wants to watch all of Fallout before I leave on this trip so that I can say that I've done it. 
Um, because once I go on that trip, I'm not watching Jack shit until I come back. So right, right. I want to keep that storyline consistent. Um, I did install Hi-Fi Rush on my Steam Deck and a couple other titles. I kind of went back and did a whole Tango purge. I, I got exactly, exactly. So I downloaded uh uh Eat the Evil Within One because I've never played those games. And I also do own uh Ghostwire as well. So I'm going to play with their catalog a little bit while I'm on the trip. It is a road trip, but I'm not driving the entire time. So I'm going to take advantage on those legs where I'm in a passenger princess. So um, looking forward to that. And then other than that, yeah, the trip itself, uh, I'm going to actually check here to make sure I'm on point. Because like I said, it's a road or I don't know if I've said it on the show. I think we talked about it right beforehand, but it is a road trip to Las Vegas. Uh, we're making several stops along the way um ooh, ooh. oh no something happened um we'll look at that in a minute um wow that's crazy but we're making stops at like okc uh uh not oakland what is it called oklahoma city we're stopping there we're stopping in tulsa we're stopping in uh memphis tennessee uh santa fe uh mesa verde and then getting all the way to las vegas so it's a lot of different stops. Going to see a lot of different things. I'm excited for that. That's going to be a fun time. Um, a lot of money, but it'll be <laughs> worth it for the experience. <laughs> when you're stopping, are you are you like, oh, we're here, and then like taking a picture of something and then leaving, or or is there like a plan of like, oh, we're going to this like museum or something and then we're leaving? What was? Yeah, we do have plans. Uh, the idea is we're going to once we're going to just straight drive straight through in the night wake up pretty early so that we have time to stop at one maybe two things see some of the culture and whatnot take some pictures and then get back on the road before it gets too late into the afternoon and then you know get to where we're going relatively late wake up get early see see around where we just stop that and keep going that type of vibe that's very cool yeah, so, I, I maybe one day i should do this because it's a pretty substantial road trip. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be driving for what, like two, three days at least? It's like 37 hour trip. <sighs> yeah, so, but it's all broken up. I think the longest leg of driving is Mesa Verde to Vegas, which is about eight hours. Um, but most of the legs are like six, seven hours, something like that. So it'll be fun. We just got to make sure we're pretty strict about managing our time. Yeah, that's going to be the biggest one, right? You, yeah, you mm -hmm. have too much fun somewhere. You're behind schedule. Like, exactly because i'll be damned if we're going to bed at 2 3 a.m every night i will die <laughs> yeah 2 3 and then wake up at 6 or something mm -hmm. <laughs> uh but that's 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 awesome i love little things like that one day i should probably do a road trip too just so you, you know it's the kind of thing you get to say and also um it's funny you'll be able to see a lot of diverse places which is really cool mm -hmm. that's one place i love uh, that's one thing i love about america is it's very different especially if you go corner to corner like you're gonna see completely different agriculture and these things and that's of course just because of how big america is especially compared to other countries so it's very cool mm -hmm. and it's and it's crazy it's crazy that that's impossible in many of the world to to like mm -hmm. go and stay in the same country so that's that's going to be a fun thing you'll be able to say too you'll be able to be like yeah i was there there xyz and you can show your kids or whatever yeah i not having it as crazy of a weekend i'll just be kind of relaxing with the wife probably we're doing our office rewatch so that's fun um we're almost done with that because we're only probably going to watch it like season seven because you know it doesn't really get it doesn't really stay good after that so after that i'll probably um i think godzilla minus one is coming to a streaming service soon mm. uh so i want to watch that okay. i just don't know when so whenever that comes, everything stops and I watch that because I've been very excited to watch. I did not have time to watch it when it was in theaters. So as soon as that drops somewhere, I'll be watching that in its entirety. I'm sure loving it because I heard nothing but good things. But aside from that, that's going to be finishing Stella Blade. I will for sure have that done by the time I record next time because there's only a handful of hours left in this game. And I'll probably spend that little extra time to go ahead and get that platinum and then move on to something else. I'm... Of course, playing Destiny 2 a little bit here and there just to keep, just to, you know, in the background, make sure everything's mm -hmm. ready. I like doing the day one raid. Whistle wet. Yeah, I keep the, yeah, I keep the whistle wet, um, soaking wet. <laughs> and <laughs> I want, I need to be day one ready, which means I only have three days. So I have to like prep now. So it's not as bad. You know, I won't bore people with that, but spending my time in that, playing some of the new content as well that they've been adding uh, with Into the Light, finishing up. Small little things doing Pantheon, which I love quite a bit. If you don't know what Pantheon is, that's when you do a bunch of the 
raid encounters in one kind of playlist. So it's if you think about it, it's like, you know, it's like a it's like a just the hits playlist of a f- your favorite oh. band, but it's the raid encounters. So it's really fun. They add a boss every week, um, finishing with eight total bosses at the end of this whole thing. That's going to be great. Uh, and it's going to get more hard or harder, I should say, every week leading up to the mm-hmm. eighth one. So that's going to be exciting. I already did this week, so now I got to wait for next week's. But yeah, having a having a blast like always. Just a little bit playing Destiny Two. Spent time. I'll end with this. I spent time in the garden. I love gardening. Nice. Uh, I got some. I got so much in the ground. I don't know if you garden, but uh, I um, uh, I got my it, tomatoes. It me. My dad does, but yeah, got tomatoes, squash. I got some uh, cucumbers, strawberries, watermelons, lettuces, multiple lettuces. <laughs> Lead um, eye, lead eyes. <laughs> uh, what else? I think I, that's pretty much it. I think. Oh, banana peppers, love those. Jalapeno mm, peppers, yeah. love lo- peppers. So easy to grow. So easy to grow. Mm-hmm. So are tomatoes. I, my last year, I got so many tomatoes. I was giving them to people. Uh, so I'm ha- happy for that to happen nice. again. I, hopefully they take because I literally have like three of them. So if uh, if they all grow Tomate like last year's, so I'm gonna drowning in tomatoes. Aside from that, that's uh, that's gonna be my weekend. Thank you again, Emmett. Sp- taking the time, we went two and a half hours. Uh, believe it or not, that's almost pretty much what we do. Uh, that actually might be a little short. I don't know, uh, but two and yeah, a half hours. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't hit three. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're usually hitting three, three and a half. Sometimes I think our longest was three and a half to four with our game of the year discussion. God, um, <laughs> that and, was crazy. And that's something that only you and I can do. I, I this. Yeah. As soon as we get to talking, we just go. Mm-hmm. So uh, again, I thank you. Well, um, of course, welcome to the thing. We have Spoonful that's taking a hiatus, but not hiatus. So make sure you keep checking in with them. Uh, notification bell helps the most. If you don't feel like checking in, just Absolutely. hit the bell. That's going to notify you when it goes live. Welcome to the thing. Of course, I'm very excited to listen to. I have not listened to um, the most recent one because I wanted to listen to your thoughts on the whole thing. Of course, with Kendrick Lamar and Drake. So I'll say the most recent one is Post Euphoria, the one that I recorded last night that just went up on Substack. We're trying out Substack subscriptions that's fun. early. So um, you'll get that episode Friday for everyone else. But right now, you can pay seven bucks and get it now. Um, that episode we recorded last night, that's after Not Like Us and Everything. It is absolutely dancing on Drizzy's grave for all, half the episode. Nice. And then we get upset at Microsoft. So yeah, yeah, know. yeah, yeah. As you should, I guess. Yeah, I can't. Absolutely. I can't wait to see how all that pans out. It seems so sad right now, you know. Yeah, but there's got to be a light at the end of the tunnel, right? That'll keep us going. Something. If nice I didn't happen. believe there wasn't a light at the end of the tunnel, I don't think I'd continue to go down the tunnel. I don't think so either. I think I would probably divert into I don't anything know, else. The, the razor <laughs> store. Try out the razor. <laughs> okay, that's the last thing I expected. <laughs> God, thank you so much for tuning into this Easy Chairs Game podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time. Two and a half hours. That means you're a real MVP. I want to thank all the new listeners. Again, we continue growing. I'm going to continue putting in. This one will be uh, broken up for obvious reasons <laughs> over the week. <laughs> so get ready for that. Remember, patreon.com slash Chiefs if you want to spend a few bucks, get everything early. And there will always be ad free, although I don't put ads in this anyway. So until next time, go Chief. You are hiding a child. (laughs) You are hiding a false child again.